World Pro Racing, where sim racing becomes real. Senna was a god. No one could even dream to follow him. I'm from a very humble background. The role of women at that time were really difficult. This is so dangerous. You are risking not only your life, but also my life.
World Pro Racing, where sim racing becomes real. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and welcome along to World Pro Racing. Whether you're watching us on ESTV, Motorsport TV, or TVM e uh, Sports, also watching on Twitch and on YouTube and on Facebook as well. We welcome you along to what is a very special event. This, of course, is the HyperX Open Series race number one at Monza, dedicated to William Marsh. Now, if you don't know William Marsh, uh, he was the founder of Sim Racing Paddock, and he sadly passed away on the early hours of March 22nd at the age of 27. Now, a family uh, family statement did read, and I will say this for you, these are excerpts from it. It's with the deepest sorrow and heartbreak that we tell you he tragically and unexpectedly passed away in his sleep in the early hour, morning hours of March 22nd. Will fought for his life until the end, and his death was not by his own hand. But uh, if you knew Will, and if you watched Will, any of his content, you will realize that he was really open about mental health, his own mental health, his own struggles, and by the testimonials, he was always there to help others when they needed him the most, especially with mental health uh, and any crises they were going through. He was one of the first to approach and ask for assistance and to provide assistance himself. And we know that William will always be a part, a huge part of the sim racing community. And this is really a, just a clear message that if you are struggling with mental health, especially during this time, it's a tough time for everybody. Speak to your friends, speak to anybody, be open about your mental health, because it is so, so important that we all make sure that we keep ourselves in a good shape mentally, as well as physically. There's something, something over, sometimes overlooked by everybody in our mental health. So obviously uh, we do have to say that if you are struggling and you don't want to speak to friends, you'd rather stay anonymous. In the UK, if you're watching in the UK, of course you can reach out to the Samaritans. Their number is 116123. You can call from any UK number and you'll be connected to a mental health counselor. If you're watching along in Malta, the number is 179 and you can report any mental health crises there as well. So this race is dedicated to William Marsh. Uh, we'll be having a tribute song to him later on as well as a formation lap of silence for him as well in both races. Myself, Kieran McGinley, I'm joined alongside Kai Bacini tonight for the opening round of this open series here with the HyperX series. Kai, it's great to have you along with us once again. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for asking, Kieran. And uh, I'm excited to join you alongside for hopefully some more months. Okay, like, hey, Osprey Filio, it always poses a challenge on the first lap, so I think it'll be interesting to see how these drivers scale that challenge. 
Yeah, we were speaking just briefly to our race director, Adrian Figayo, and uh, he was telling us that the briefing was pretty stern and pretty strict on that Retafilio chicane. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't see any drama going in towards the very first chicane both times around. Now, with this format, it's a pretty interesting one. It's not a championship per se, but the top three, once both races have been combined in points tonight, will be walking away with some lovely prizes as provided to us by HyperX. And those prizes look really, really good. Two races to decide who gets those prizes. A feature race and a sprint race, both of them having a mandatory pit stop at the halfway point, 10 minute pit window where fueling is mandatory. Uh, they look good, those prizes. I'm going to assume there's going to be a lot of fighting on the line for them. Well, I think if there's prizes involved, that always brings another aspect of uh, excitement to the field. And I think that just gives a bit more want to the drivers. I think it'll be interesting to see who manages to perform well under even more pressure due to this. And yeah, it'll definitely be interesting. It really, really will. And because it's an open series, it's not a championship. There'll be rounds running all the way until December monthly. So if you want to try and get involved, the spaces are very, very limited because it's such a popular event. I think as soon as these went live, there was only about three spaces left out of the entire series after 24 hours. So it's proved to be a really, really popular event. And hopefully we should have the full grid of 25 drivers along for the ride tonight. It's an interesting format as well. Um, we've got obviously points on offer we've got the sprint race which has obviously reduced amount of points that's coming up first uh, so we'll get 18 points for the winner 15 points for second place we go down in one point increments all the way down to 15 place scoring a low point when we get to the feature race uh, first place will then get 25 points second place 22 third place 19 and it goes down in increments there till we get down to 15th place with the single point if the top three drivers of the previous event get another podium in the next race they'll have a deduction of points. So if they finish on the podium in the first race and they get first place in the second race, they'll be deducted three points. Uh, second place will be deducted two points. Third place will be deducted one point. Now, luckily, we don't have to worry about the bats out behind that. We've got to the team behind the scene who will be able to confirm to us who the top three will be later on this evening. But what it will mean is that it's almost trying to bring the field closer together and give more of a chance to those maybe who didn't have a great first race to still have a chance of getting their hands on some of this merchandise. Yeah, well, I think uh, that also brings the question that will some drivers try and uh, sandbag their first race, as some people may say, uh, get a bit of a lower position, maybe P4, P5, in the first race and then really push to the limits in that second race to get those big points in the bag. It's all going to be in that strategy, isn't it? It's going to be pretty a strategic race, a strategic battle all the way through. And if you say like, you know, drivers might just take it easy in the sprint race. Well, they've got qualifying coming up and the qualifying for that session, that 50 minute session decides the grids for both races. So you still have to push in qualifying because even if you want to just sort of put a cap on your performance in the sprint race, you'll then have to go for it in the uh, in the feature race later on. And you will have to make sure you're at the head of the field at that point. Yeah, well, I think qualifying, as you said, it, it's, it's uh, deciding the position for both of the races. So I think it'll be really interesting uh, to see, well, people pushing to their limits and then uh, see if drivers really do try to drop off in the first race, try to let quite a few cars by just to make sure that they're not on the podium. But it will be interesting to see how uh, people take this on board. Absolutely. And I've just had uh, heard in my ear that uh, before the sprint race tonight, we'll be having the song dedicated to William uh, before the race. Then we'll have the formation lap of silence before the race gets underway. During the five minute break between race one and race two, the song will, of course, play again. And uh, that, of course, will be in tribute for him. So we'll be expected to hear that song at least twice. And uh, I've just heard a preview of it. It's a really lovely song uh, that we've got coming up for you. And uh, I believe the song was made by Glenn Orpheus. Uh, so in, in memory of William Marsh here tonight. So we'll hear that song at least twice. It's a lovely song. So it's a great thing to hear there. So 
onto the track then as we've seen a bit of bollard has already been taken out in this practice session but we're about halfway through as we see now it's Hamada Akizi who's time who's topping the timing charts at this moment in time with a 147.2 we've got uh, Spears in second place nine thousandths of a second off the time set by the Ferrari there and you know we were talking uh, Kai, just before this race, about what cars we were expecting to see. There's a lot of Mercedes out there here. Yeah, there is a lot of Mercedes, which, to be honest, I really wasn't expecting due to the lack of top speed on the Mercedes compared to cars like the Ferrari and the Lamborghini, which we also see drivers uh, trying to take on board to this track. But current fastest time set by Ferrari, but only nine thousandths of a second separating... Uh, the Keezy and Spires, so I think it'll be interesting to see how the Mercedes performs uh, due to it being a front-engine car and also the drivers in the uh, Ferrari. You'd think it'd be more balanced due to the mid-engine car being uh, to their advantage, so I guess we'll have to see how these drivers uh, ta t take that head on. It's a really good view of the Retafilio chicane, something that's going to be a really, really big ask for these drivers heading into these races. There's Luke Whitehead in the Astra Racing Mercedes here, currently fourth in the standings right now. There's Harry Spears in the Sidemax Motorworks Mercedes, these bright red Mercedes. You're not going to miss it out on track, that's for sure. A nine thousandth of a second slower than Hamada Akizi, also in the Astra car. So good to see Astra back onto the grid. It's the uh, first time in a while for me, at least, to see an Ashtoir car on the track and normally with Ashtoir you get a little bit of success behind them as well. Yeah well I think uh, that was definitely shown by Luke Whitehead not so long ago when we did the triple header. He was uh, very dominant in those races and shown his pace but in P4 right now you never know what's going to happen in quality but a tenth of the leader not as close as the others. So we've got practice here, of course. We've got about six and a half minutes to go, just over six and a half minutes to go, actually. Before we head then into a 15-minute qualifying session, we'll have a 30-minute sprint race followed by a 60-minute feature race. And in the races, there'll be a mandatory stop that's required in a 10-minute pit window in the middle of the race where refueling is mandatory. So those are the rules stated there. And of course, we've got the points on offer. Fewer points on offer in the sprint race than there are in the feature race with penalty points uh, sorry, a podium penalty points. There you go. That'll do. Uh, for drivers who have repeat podiums here. So we'll let the stewards and the uh, team behind the scenes work out the points as Luke Whitehead goes fastest in this practice session. 47.088. I do wonder. 46 is definitely going to be on the cards here in qualifying. When you're in this practice session, drivers just don't want to reveal too much. They're going to try and keep as many cars as they can as close to the chest as they can. I think something to take into account as well is that uh, the the progression of the track rolls over between practice and qualifying. So the more laps that these drivers get in now, it gets taken over into qualifying. So the faster times that will be put down on the tables. Well, we'll see. We'll have to wait and see if they can translate those times as well. That's going to be a huge, huge thing as uh, Luke Whitehead pulls over to the right-hand side to let a couple of cars through. Uh, meanwhile, there is Hamada Akizi then in the Ashtar Racing Ferrari making his way through the Curva Grande. And what one thing that is so good about this track here in Monza, built in the early 20s, as far back as 1922, the track looked a little bit different. There was no parabolica. That was two 90-degree right-angle corners. So... Uh, that was a very, very different time for Bonza. But other than that, it's relatively unchanged. The positioning of the Roger chicane, that's the second chicane, has changed somewhat in those previous years, was, as well as the addition of the Retafilio chicane, the very first chicane, and the Ascari chicane later on in the mid-60s and early 70s that was introduced. But it's been a track that has a lot of heritage behind it. And how can you tell? Well, coming up towards Ascari, there's the old banking right on top of you as you make your way on towards Ascari. No, no shortage of history at this track. Yeah, there is a lot of history in this track, as you said, built in 1922. And if you look at a track map, I don't think you'll quite see it with these drivers driving around. There was actually a high-speed oval circuit that was built into Monza, uh, which hasn't been used in years. But it's still there, and, uh, well, I guess that really just shows the history that this track has. Yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, been dilapidated ever since. It's hardly been used and not really maintained. But uh, there is a, an unwritten rule in Monza not to go on the banking. But 
uh, you know, there's a huge amount of banking on that circuit. It, it's quite astonishing. The pictures don't do it justice how much banking there is on the old circuit there. And as you rightfully said, it was used as a, as a Formula One venue. The, the whole circuit, which was nearing 10 kilometers at that point, using the whole of the uh, uh, whole of the Monza uh, track, plus an addition of the uh, oval there. And uh, no doubt about it, the Ferraris won, who had the fastest engine on the grid, that's for sure. But uh, they certainly won those races. Drivers weren't happy, though, back in the day because they thought the circuit itself, with the addition of the oval, was just too unsafe. Even back in the late 60s there, they still thought it was too unsafe to go racing on both variations. And ever really since the, uh, the mid-70s there, the track really has never been used. And it's been left to be a little bit overgrown. There's grass growing through the cracks. There's grass growing through the tarmac and the concrete and the banking. It's sad a sight to see, but it's still got that little bit of heritage and history behind it. As Nat Thomas comes across the line with a 148.234, that's his best lap time of the session. It's good enough for 17th fastest in this session so far. Harry Spears comes into the pit lane, third place so far. His best lap time, 147.2, is good enough for third place. There is Jimmy Holm in the homing missile treble seven McLaren. And always a great sight to see that treble seven on. Yeah, it's always a great sight to see the treble seven on the track. He's going to make his way around Parabolica and to the line now. Let's see what he's able to do. He's going to cross the line now. Let's see what he does here. Is an improvement? Yes, it is. It puts him up to P6. It is a 147.586. So good lap there from uh, John Holm. So go on board with uh, Nat Thomas as he makes his way through the first of the two Lesmos. Two minutes left on the clock, though. Luke Whitehead still on pole by attempt. Well, it's not pole position just yet. It's just free practice. We're just warming up for this one. Uh, we've got uh, qualifying coming up in just a couple of minutes of time. So wait with bated breath for that one. But uh, yeah, this is definitely a session where you don't want to give too much away as to your pace coming up for qualifying. As we see Nat Thomas make his way now on towards Ascari. This quick left, right, left here, really testing the limits of that setup. Of course, the drivers will have been bringing and trying to make sure they prioritise the top speed of these cars wherever possible but with such corners such as Ascari the two Lesmos and Parabolica it's really going to test how well your car is set up to actually tackle the corners because funnily enough there are corners at Monza that you do have to worry about yeah the, there is some uh, tricky sections around Monza there isn't many corners but the the few corners that there is uh, it's quite easy to get them wrong there's 11 corners around this track 11 corners that you can very much make mistakes around. Now Thomas crosses the line. It's not an improvement in position. It's still P18 for him. As we watch Malgorek go down the home straight now. As he makes his way down into the Retifilio chicane that we were talking about earlier on the first lap. It can uh, definitely uh, show us some action, I think that's fair to say. And uh, talking about showing us some action, he doesn't even take the chicane. Yeah, I think uh, he was happy with his lap and just decided to stop in the Retifido chicane. Either that or he missed his braking point and uh, made it look like he uh, was abandoning it in the first place. There is Hamada Erkizi making his way through Parabolica in the 717 Ashtoir racing Ferrari. Here he comes then towards the line. Track limits will have been discussed in that briefing but here he comes oh he comes into the pit lane so no completion of that lap with only a few seconds left on the clock here in free practice uh, you see nat thomas there making his way towards the second lesmo all the way through we've got yellow flags there yet you just saw a car there on the inside of the corner maybe nat thomas might have been a bit caught out by that one as uh, we now make our way on through the curve at Del Seraglio and onwards then towards Ascari. Check of flag falls here in free practice. And I believe the first driver to take it will be the number 41 car. Uh, so they will come across the line, be the first car to take the check of flag. A couple of cars, a handful of cars out there ready to complete a lap. Nat Thomas now looking to try and maybe use a bit of toe then on the run up towards Parabolica. Maybe just to see what that does to the top speed. Of course, it will increase it, but he might have to brake slightly earlier in towards Parabolica. And of course, a little bit of air from the car in front is great when you're going in a straight line. Not so great when you're trying to turn the car in. It can disrupt the aerodynamic performance of the of the splitter and the rear wing as Nat Thomas comes across the line. That must have helped him because he went 10th fastest there within a second of the lap time from Luke Whitehead. So as practice comes to an end, gives us an idea of what sort of times to expect in qualifying. I'm, I'm expecting surely 27s, uh, sorry, 47s are definitely <laughs> possible in these cars. 
Well, I think 27s would be a little bit of a stretch, but <laughs> yes. 47 is definitely possible. I think. And uh, I think uh, hopefully we haven't lost Kai there and uh, hopefully you can still hear me. But uh, yeah, well, I think what Kai was saying was hopefully we get to see those 147s and obviously correcting my 127. That's not a great look on me. But anyway, yes, hopefully the cars will be trying to make sure the drivers will be making sure that they can get themselves into the mood as quickly as they possibly can. Obviously, when it comes to qualifying, you don't really want to reveal too much of your hand here in this practice session. You don't want to give away too much of the game. As well as that, the track is always improving. I mean, you would have seen at the top right hand corner then it's a healthy track temperature we've got here. So really promoting the amount of grip the drivers really have available in these high speed corners. So. We'll have to wait and see how qualifying goes. Hopefully we'll get Kai back at some point. Hopefully he's uh, doing okay there and hopefully he'll come back for the qualifying session. I think he was so taken aback by the mistake I made, he's just decided to drop out of it. But hopefully we'll get it back very, very soon. In the meantime though, qualifying will be getting underway very, very shortly. And uh, what are the chances we'll see a car other than an Ash Tua car on pole position? Luke Whitehead looks like he is in form once again, but there are cars around him and drivers around him looking to try and take advantage, looking to try and grab that pole position wherever they possibly can. Let us know, of course, in the chats there, wherever you are watching, uh, whether it be on Facebook, on Twitch, on YouTube, or on ESTV, TVM Sport, and Motorsport TV. Let us know who you think is going to try and grab pole position. Let us know who the flags are flying for as well as we make our way towards this qualifying session. And of course, Monza. What a fantastic track to go racing on, as we've already mentioned and already alluded to, that uh, Adrian Figayo, our head steward here, will of course have made it clear to these drivers about the Retifilio chicane to make sure there's no heroics going in towards the very first chicane. It is very, very narrow on entry. And even if it is a rolling start, we're still going too wide down towards the first chicane. It is never a good sign. Oh, there's Alex Johnston going for a wild ride, going through Ascari. Then somehow he managed to keep, keep a hold of that one as he now makes his way now up towards Parabolica we'll have to wait and see there luckily for him that's just his outlap so he'll be able to gather it all back up and see how he goes you can see there in the top right hand corner we've got a uh, southwesterly wind about nine kilometers per hour there so it's not a strong wind but it can be a wind that can put you off some of these corners as we see then alex johnston is going to be one of the first cars to start our lap time here in the omega e racing team the number one mercedes as he makes his way now down towards the retifilio uk and if you're looking at the left hand side of the track then braking about 140 meters before the corner the brakes will be glowing hot going into towards the retifilio chicane down to first gear to make sure the car turns in then we go through the gears then as we make our way through curva grande flat out through here as we make our way through the right hand of this slight banking as well so make sure you can use that as much as you possibly can keep tight to the grass then and keep to the right hand side as we make our way up towards the Roger chicane at the end of the first sector down to second gear here and of course those sleeping policemen are ready to catch you out if you're not careful and if you try and take too many liberties with the curbs up towards the first Roger as uh, sorry the first Lesmo as we make our way through slightly banked on entry there but this is the second Lesmo here, which can really catch you out if you're not careful. Very misleading corner here, but you can use plenty of that curb on the exit there to open up the corner on exit. Through the curve at Del Seraglio, keeping it nice and tight to the curb on the left-hand side before bringing the car over to the right-hand side of the track underneath the old banking as we now make our way towards the Ascari chicane slowing the car down down to third gear you can see already where the track is starting to rubber in you can see there the car gets a little bit nervous if you take some of the curves through Ascari but if you've got a brave mentality you can really nail that Ascari chicane onwards then we go towards Parabolica and again looking towards the left hand side picking out your braking spot here braking around about 120 meters before the corner turning all the way through towards Parabolica. The car loves to understeer here if you're just carrying too much speed through. Onwards then towards the start finish line. And this will be the first qualifying lap time here from Alex Johnson. So of course it will go quickest to 48-0 and then go Spears 47 472 puts himself now on provisional pole position. Oh, we got a Mercedes in the wall there, really going over the grass then. Not sure who that was. 
as uh, we make our way all the way through. It could have been uh, a 2-9. I got the first two numbers, 2-9, but I didn't get the last one, so I'm not quite sure who it was, but it was a Mercedes out there. As we see uh, Chris Pinchbeck now making his way towards the line to set a new qualifying lap time for himself as he now goes uh, uh, he goes 11th fastest for now. Uh, Carly Atkins at the PC Boys eSports car goes 5th fastest, 47.8. There is Luke Whitehead then with a 47.5. It's enough for third fastest at the moment, but we do know what Luke Whitehead is like. He loves to pull out a lap time right at the very end as he now makes his way all the way up towards the Roger Chicane. Looking to just, uh, well, he's, he might be on an in lap actually, so he might not be too concerned about how he takes the Roger Chicane here as he makes his way now on towards the first Lesmo. But it's Hamada Okizi who is on provisional pole position, 47.3 there. So well into our predictions at the uh, start of qualifying then to definitely get a 47 on the board. As uh, Luke Whitehead, we just see him there going slightly wide on the exit of the second Lesmo. As we now make our way now on towards the Curva del Seraglio and now onwards towards the Ascari chicane, that fantastic left-right-left left complex then. Making our way all the way through Luke Whitehead in the Ash Twa racing car. Just making sure he gets that absolutely spot on, even if it is possibly an outlap there. It's still good to see he's got good control of that car. Well, if it was an in-lap, he probably would have pulled to the side and, and come back to the pit lane that way. So it's safe to assume this could be a lap he's on right now. There is a Diego Riboldi then, an Italian in a Ferrari. Is there a better love story than that one? And the Nordest Ferrari, that is, the number 69 car, making his way through Ascari. And then he'll make his way now onwards towards Parabolica. Maybe a useful help there. I think that was Reina Rissar in the uh, traditionally p uh, pink car from Reina Rissar, as he now makes his way on towards Parabolica. Uh, I believe uh, Alex Goldschmidt called it the uh, the highlighter car, mainly because he had the pink highlighter with him that day, and uh, that's what it was alluded to. Here comes Diego Riboldi then making his way onwards towards the start-finish line, and let's see what lap time he can put. He's currently 24th fastest. He now goes 19th fastest with a 49.371. It puts him now onto the 10th row of the grid. Marek Vons in the Connection Lost Racing team car that's a great name for a team in the 404 car as he now makes his way on towards the first lesmo great livery too as well on that ferrari as he now tackles the first lesmo onwards he will go towards the second lesmo well within a second of luke whitehead's time i say luke whitehead now on provisional pole 47.106 as harry spears goes even quicker as well he's now within two hundredths of a second uh, of the provisional pole position time. And it's just asking something of Hamada Akizi. He now finds himself just over a tenth of a second off of that provisional pole position time. As there is Marek Vons then making his way, tackling his way through Ascari then. And there you can see he just took a little bit of gravel there. And uh, yeah, that's it. He decides to abandon that lap time altogether. Carly Atkins then in the PC Boys Esports Mercedes, the number 41 car making his way down the back straight and onwards towards Parabolica. There you can see a Lamborghini flashing his lights there as uh, he warns someone he is coming through. And uh, there you can see Carly Atkins making his way through the long right-hander at Parabolica, currently within half a second of Luke Whitehead's qualifying time. Maybe a little bit of toe towards the start-finish line. Will do him a world of good. Here he comes towards the line. Yep, he goes third fastest now. 0 0.105 seconds off that best lap time from Luke Whitehead. So there's definitely a good stretch there. There's Jan Nicholas Erbrich in a, in a Lamborghini. My goodness, we, we never normally see Erbrich in any other car other than a Lexus. So this is quite a, a new thing. But, uh, well, a Lamborghini at an, at an Italian track, it really has to be done in the DJ Racing 299 Mercedes. Uh, sorry, Lamborghini as he now makes his way down towards the old banking and then towards Ascari. So we've got just over six and a half minutes to go. It is Luke Whitehead on provisional pole position. It's Harry Spears in second place. Carly Atkins in third with Hamada Akizi in fourth place. Jan Nicholas Erbrich, who we're watching making his way towards Parabolica, is in fifth place. David Ohak is in sixth. With Speth in seventh, Holman eighth, Vons in ninth, and Riley rounding off the top ten for now. But we've still got just over six minutes of qualifying to go. 
and I'm sure there's going to be even more to add to the storyline of qualifying as there you can see Erbrick making his way on towards the start finish line can he make an improvement on his time or is he winding up for another lap he was winding up for another lap because his last lap time was a three minute 24 and you see there he took the wider line going through Parabolica building up more speed so that he can use to attack down the start finish straight and hopefully I'm having word that Kai has returned and rejoined us Kai are you with us yes I, I am back unfortunately I had a little bit of a moment with my PC but I'm back and ready for, uh, for the end of qualifying and the beginning of the chaos, you may say. Well, absolutely. Well, Luke Whitehead, who else you've missed it, 47-1. Uh, we're getting very close, quite close, in fact, to the 46s. So he could go even faster than we were thinking here, Kai. But he's currently on provisional pole position. It spears in second place within two hundredths of a second of that provisional pole position time. And there is Jan Nicholas Erbrick, who's on a flying lap right now, making his way through the first Lesbo. And as, as I was just saying earlier, we, we never normally see Jan Nicholas in any other car other than a Lexus. Yeah, uh, Jan Nicholas, we don't really see him in any other car than the uh, Lexus, as you said. Uh, around the Italian job, though, he did really have to put up with the Ferrari and the Lamborghini, so maybe he's took a little bit of inspiration from that and uh, stuck to his roots. Well, we'll see now as he makes his way through Ascari on his flying lap, making his way through. And, uh, yeah, you can see taking a little bit of curb on the right-hand side then. Obviously, uh, no one's been pulled up for it yet, so that must have been discussed in the briefing as he now makes his way up towards Parabolica, towards the right-hander, down the gears then, braking. You see there, going the long way round and maybe cutting back to build up the speed a little bit earlier as he makes his way towards the start-finish line. Let's see what sort of lap time this will be from Jan Nicholas Erbrick. He makes his way on towards the start-finish line. What's this going to be? It is going to be a 49.4, so... Uh, just off of his uh, personal best so far, there could be another theory as to why he didn't quite get the lap time there. Maybe he's trying to burn off a little bit of fuel so that he can uh, really have that car as light as possible towards the end of this session. There's Dean Vella in the GT Omega RPM eSports car, the number 54 Mercedes, making his way in towards the Roger Chicane, currently on a flying lap right now. And this is so, so close. One second covers the top 13. Two seconds covers 27 cars. It's a really, really good field to go racing with. Yeah, this is an amazing field to uh, to do some racing with. 29 cars, as you said, as we can see. Uh, Dean Vela, as we're on board with him right now in the Mercedes. And uh, looking a little bit further down the grid, you can just see how many people have went for the Mercedes in this race. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think the Mercedes has that... Uh, you know, that correlation to high top speed nowadays. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes out on track. As Dean Vela makes his way now up towards the flying right-hander of Parabolica. As we see then, I think that's the uh, number 41 car. I think that is Carly Atkins right behind as well. And as Dean Vela makes his way through this long right-hander, it's an age to wait to put the throttle down once again. He now makes his way towards the start-finish line. Let's see what this lap time will be for Dean Vela. Currently 20th fastest. Uh, he stays 20th fastest. He does improve on his lap time, though. But he'll stay 20th fastest. There is Harry Spears, then. As Carly Atkins actually does go to the top of the table, 47.094. And no doubt will that toe have helped him up towards Parabolica. But a really solid lap from the Mercedes driver, from the PC Esports guys as uh, he now takes provisional pole position. Here's Harry Spears making his way towards the line, flashing his lights on the way past. He knows we're watching him, but he also knows he's going to set a 46, 46, 8, 2, 1 from Harry Spears. Puts him now on provisional pole position. A little wiggle there. He's really happy with that one. Yeah, what an amazing lap time there from Harry Spears. It looks like the fastest foot lap time has been set in the Mercedes right now. So... Maybe you're right about the Mercedes being uh, in correlation with high speeds as he's now three temps faster than Carly Atkins, who is in second place right now. Yes, Hamada Akizi now in the 717 Ashtar racing car, making his way on towards Parabolica. 
just over four tenths behind at the moment of that provisional pole position time. But he now makes his way through Parabolica and onwards towards this start finish line. Is he on a flying lap or is he gearing up for one? He's backed off, has he? No, he's making his way towards the line as he sets a lap time here. Yeah, there you go. Second fastest now within two tenths of Harry Spears, but just still within that 147 times there. So Harry Spears, the only car in the 146s, 60 seconds of qualifying left to go so if you cross the line now you're going to be safe enough to complete your lap at the end there so it's all about that race to the line to make sure that you get the best track possible it is optimum of course but in theory with more rubber down you can get a fast up lap time on the board as carly atkins now takes over second spot then as he now goes into the 146s with a 46 9 3 2 puts him now back onto the front row of the grid so Really, that battle for pole position is just going really fran frantic right now. I mean, there's four drivers there who could potentially take it, and it's Spears on top right now. Yeah, this is really going to go down to the wire with 15 seconds left in qualifying. Doesn't look like any of the top three are going to be able to get another lap in. Luke Whitehead, is he going to be able to snatch it up? Well, Luke Whitehead, he's in the pit lane. So the top four are all in the pit. So they will not be able to improve on any of their lap time. So that's the top four so far. Here's Marek Vons as he makes his way through Parabolica. Checkered flag falls. And here comes Marek Vons then towards the line. He'll be the first to take the checkered flag. Can he go faster? Yes, he can. He goes eighth fastest then with a 147.568 in the connection lost racing Ferrari there. The number 404. A great car and a great number as well. Really done from Merrick there but that's his qualifying session over we've still got Speth out there somewhere out on track uh, in the uh, number in the number uh, treble eight car making his way I think that's him making his way towards Parabolica on the short straight up towards it we'll have to see how he gets on on his lap time and so cars now make their way back towards the pit lane or complete their lap there's uh, Jan Ryler making his way in the R3 racing Ferrari the number treble three his way through currently 13th fastest right now just over a second off of that provisional pole position time he now makes his way up towards parabolica and making his way now can he find an improvement he's 13th fastest right now through parabolica he will go and let's see if this is going to be an improvement speth uh, fifth fastest didn't improve on his lap time there so we'll stay on the third row of the grid. Here comes Jan Ryler towards the line in that Ferrari. Can he get an improvement on his time? Yes, he can. He moves up a position up to 12th fastest then. So that's a good result for him. Perisada, we haven't really seen a lot of in this qualifying session. He's 22nd fastest so far as he makes his way in towards Parabolica. He'll be the last car to complete his lap time here, making his way through. Can he get into that top 20 then? On towards the start finish line, he will go. He'll complete his lap time. Can he go faster across the line? Uh, yes, he can. He goes 14th fastest, well within the top 20 there. So a good lap time from him. Well, the top four then look incredibly close in that qualifying session alone. Let alone let them out for the race. Let them loose. I can't wait to see how that will end. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting race. It seems uh, it seems that it's very close in the top four. I mean, well. To be honest, what else did we really expect from these drivers? We know they have the pace, and they are just so close between each other. But in the first race, it's going to be a question of what strategy do people decide on? Yes, absolutely. And we'll be able to find that out very, very shortly. We've got the race coming up for you. But first, uh, we're going to go to the song that was made by Glenn Orpheus in memory of uh, Glenn Marsh, who sadly passed away on the 22nd of March at the age of 27. So we're going to go to that song now.
one more light goes out in the sky of a million stars. It flickers, flickers. Who cares when someone's time runs out? If a moment is all we are, or quicker, quicker. Who cares if one more light goes out? Well, I.
for William Marshton. Let's go racing here on World Pro Racing for the first race of the HyperX Open Series. The sprint race, half an hour here as the cars now line up on their formation lap. Two wide down towards the Retafilio chicane. A pit stop in the middle. Refueling is mandatory. Let's see who comes out on top. Harry Spears on the right. Carly Atkins on the left. We'll be ready to go racing very, very shortly. The green flag will drop from the starting post at the top of your screen. And when it does, we'll be going racing. We are racing now. Green flags are flying. And it is a great start from Harry Spears. Not so much from Carly Atkins. He falls down the order here. The green flags fly. We are racing and heading now down towards the Retafidio chicane. Let's see if we can keep it nice and tidy in towards the very first break. And we're going four wide in the background there. Let's see if everyone can make it through. Harry Spears misses the first Chicane. He has to go through the cut through there. That'll cost him time on the exit. Jan Ryla has to go across the escape road as well, but he gets it a little bit a better, better time there. But there goes Carly Atkins then in second place, or sorry, fourth place now, all the way down the order as we now make our way onwards towards the first set of, uh, or second set of chicanes, I should say. And you can see there the, the order is just absolutely up and down at the moment, but we'll get that standing back in a minute. I believe it's Hamada Akizi who's taken over the lead of this race. Dean Vella, meanwhile, round the outside, he will go, and there you can see Hamada Akizi leads the way from Spears in second place. Luke Whitehead up into third. Not a great start here from Carly Atkins. He falls down to fourth place, having started this race in second. It's Speth in first place, uh, fifth place, Erbrick in sixth, Johnston in seventh place, Ohak in eighth, Vons in ninth, and Riley is rounding out the top ten so far. We've got the treble three car in trouble. That's Jan Riley at the first Lesmo there. He's rejoined, but he won't be happy about that one. So Akizi leads the way then. He didn't start on the front two rows, and he's currently leading the race. There is Jan Ryler then making his way out of the second Lesmo. Currently now 29th and last at the moment after an incident at the first Lesmo. But a pretty dramatic start. We saw there that Harry Spears missed the first chicane, and that really cost him that battle for the lead. Yeah, it really do. You can see Harry, Sp Harry Spears he messed up that first chicane. Uh, Hamara Kwesi jumped on that fact though and made, took full advantage. It looks like Christian's going to try and look up the inside into Parabolica, manages to stick the overtake, and uh, so does Patel. He manages to follow through on Thomas. But as we see a battle now, that is Spieth trying to hold it on the inside. Is he going to be able to hold it on Erberich? Erbrick, we saw him run this same livery in the Italian job, manages to go around the outside. Beautiful move there from Jan Nicholas Erbrick up in the P5 now, and hopefully he's able to chase down the leader soon. He really will be, and uh, yeah, a really nice move from Jan Nicholas Erbrick there, taking away fifth place from Speth. Meanwhile, battle for the lead intensifies as Okisi feels the need to defend down the inside in towards the Roger Chicane, holding on the lead right now in the Ashtar Racing Ferrari. Then Spears is giving him no mercy here as we make our way in towards the first Lesmo. Then it's Luke Whitehead in third place. We've got a replay here, so this is what happened to Jan Ryler on the first lap coming up towards the first Lesmo. So you can see he's trying to battle away with Malsharek here and oh yeah he just gets it all wrong there it's actually something happens in front of him as well and he's just an innocent bystander there was absolutely nothing he could do about that one so that's why he's all the way down the order uh, the number 69 car is also down there just making his way out of the pit lane we've since seen Jan Ryler come into the pit so Ribaldi also now in trouble as well as Riley into the pits as well we've got uh, Pinchbeck here who's right on the back of Rissar but he's having to defend from uh, Medvedev as well as we make our way in towards Ascari once again as we can see here just trying to find a way through but Pinchbeck does enough there oh that Mercedes got a leap in the air and it's around I think that's Silver Pyramids who then rolls back onto the circuit then and it's all sorts of carnage behind involving silver pyramids there and we'll have to see if we can get a closer look at that one but that looked like a car that just bottomed out there going over that little bit of curbing there and just absolutely spun up the rear tires meanwhile Akizi then tries to hold on to the lead then going in towards the Retafidio chicane for the third time then as we now try and make our way through Harry Spears right on his tail, though, right in the slipstream as well to try and find a way through the number 24 car having problems 
at Parabolica, but has got moving again. Meanwhile, here comes Spears then trying to go round the outside. It will be the outside for the entry in towards the Roger chicane. Akizi has the inside line. They've touched doors there going through in towards the second chicane. Harry Spears has got the inside line for the exit, but Akizi is going to try and make it round the outside. There goes Luke Whitehead going onto the grass. He's got the inside line for the first Lesmo here. They do come together, and that's going to leave. That's Herkizi on the outside then. Carly Atkins tries to take advantage as well, going down the inside, taking third place away. He does take third place away from Akizi, and in the blink of an eye, Akizi runs from first to fourth. Luke Whitehead, ever opportunistic driving, takes away the lead of this race, and Spears must have wondered what on earth happened. He started that route in second. He ends it in second. Yeah, Luke Whitehead, great move there. Let's have a look at what happened to Silver Piamet. Goes into the first part of Ascari, right on the back of the driver ahead. All oh, just goes over the curb way too much. Rolls the car backwards and back into the field. Oh, and he's collected by two different cars. That's really not the position that you want to be in for Silver Piamet. But whilst we go on to the race leader now, Luke Whitehead from fourth to first in one blink of an eye it is going to cross the line but he's gonna have to keep an eye out behind him it looks like spears isn't going away anytime soon not at all spears wanted this move for the race and he's still somehow in second place but he's gonna have to go the long way around in towards the opening of the retafilio chicane then luke whitehead managing to hold on has he run too deep now he's trying to get the inside line a little bit like a bump there from harry spears on the back of luke whitehead's car but uh, that's uh Pinchbeck then trying to go up the inside of Rainer Rassar. Rainer Rassar in the EuroRC.com. McLaren making his way now in towards the Retafilio chicane. Pinchbeck on the inside line and he'll take the corner away. And that is a good move there. Meanwhile, you can see picture in picture Luke Whitehead defending his position going in towards the Roger chicane as he now makes his way up towards the first Lesmo then. Somehow still holding on. Carly Atkins, meanwhile, in third place. And Akizi's under pressure there from Speth, I think, in the background there. Simon Speth trying to find a way through in the treble eight Mercedes. But meanwhile, then, Luke Whitehead still leads this way. Harry Spears is trying to do everything in his power to find a way through. Reyna Rassar, we're rejoining him at the Roger chicane, making his way through. That's a car off in the background there. We'll have to see who that was. Uh, in the gravel, but Reina Rassar now in 20th place. It was Ashton Cox. So did the two of those come together? Well, Ashton Cox has to recover that one. Meanwhile, Vishal Patel has to defend here. I believe that's the number 70 of Nat Thomas, then making our way through in towards Ascari once again. And it is Nat Thomas putting Patel under pressure then as we find our way through. That's one of the Lamborghinis getting right out of the way there. I think that was one of the back markers. Let's have a look at a replay here. So this is Ashton Cox then in the number 158 with Rassar on his left-hand side, on our right-hand side, making our way in towards the... Roger Chicane, and oh yeah, it was a half-hearted move from Rassar he tried to back out of. And those half-hearted moves are normally the most dangerous ones. Yeah, you just saw he tried to stick his nose in, but had second thoughts when he got to the apex of the corner, tried to back out just a little too late, and then got the rotation on Ashton Cox, Ashton Cox and unfortunately, that is Ashton Cox round. Nathaniel Thomas, Vela, trying to have a look around the outside, though. Isn't able to make anything move right now. But Thomas, he's going to have to be careful about Patel ahead. Getting, going very slow through the Retafilio chicane is Patel. And I think that now Thomas really wants to get a move on right now and try to make that move for P11. Yeah, he really, really will. And uh, he'll try and make that move wherever possible. And uh, we now make our way on towards the Roger chicane once again. And the pit window will not be too far away from opening. We're only about 90 seconds away from that pit window opening. Of course, a mandatory stop from all drivers in this race. And they have to make that stop within the mandatory pit window of 10 minutes. So it opens with 20 minutes of this race to go and will close with 10 minutes left of this race. And you can see there that orange bar with the number one in it is the indication of how many mandatory stops are left for that certain driver at the moment the rule at one because there is no mandatory pit stop window just yet but it will not be long before it's open meanwhile carly atkins then is putting harry spears under a bit of pressure as we make our way on towards parabolica and then you can see luke whitehead still leading the way carly atkins just filling that rear view mirror of spears then just making sure he knows he's there as we make our way through parabolica and onwards once again to the start finish straight so luke whitehead leads from spears in second place it's atkins in third erbrick in fourth 
There is Akizi in fifth place then. He's in the toe of the car ahead. That's Jan Nicholas Erbrick in the 299 Lamborghini as we make our way on towards the Retafilio chicane. And it must be a terrifying sight here. You can't actually see the corner when you're behind the car in front, right up the behind as well, as we make our way in towards the Retafilio chicane. Nice and tidy through there. Watch out for the wheel spin on the exit. You don't want to be too heavy with the right foot there as we make our way through the Curva Grande, still within that toe. And maybe a little bit of a waiting game at this moment. We'll have to see how this pit stop really shuffles up the field. Yeah, Jan Nicholas Zerbrick, though, absolutely storming through the field right now. Akizi, as you said, down to P5. He's still all over the back of the Lamborghini, you know. But it does look like the Lamborghini is suiting this track very well. So... Erbrick, let's see what he's able to do for the rest of this race. Now, Tom is having to defend from Vela behind, though. Vela, he has a little look, and you were talking about the... Oh, and that's a big jump over the curb from Nat Thomas. We were talking about his half-hearted moves, and Vela, it wasn't the car in front rotated this time, but it was himself. Yeah, he did get himself a little bit of whack on the front. Uh, I think that was the front right-hand side part of the car, and that is a weakness, but there you can see that's one of the Ashtoir cars going side by side, then going in towards the first part of uh, Ascari here, and Speth trying to hold off in the uh, Team Vodafone Mercedes, but he can't find a way through, and Akizi gets at least one position back. Now, don't forget, Akizi had started on the uh, really high up the order ah, didn't have a great start and fell back he's now back up into fifth place at the very least but look at this then he's got Vons right behind him Marek Vons in the connection lost 404 at Ferrari possibly up there as one of my favorite liveries and favorite team names and favorite car numbers all combined together and uh, there you can see the pit window is open so we'll see how many cars pile into the pit lane Akizi is one of them no doubt about that he wants a different strategy from whatever everyone else is doing out there but the pit window is open, so Akizi is the first driver to take his stop in the mandatory pit window. There you can see in the uh, window, window, you can see Luke Whitehead trying to defend his lead once again from Spears at the top of the table. But it's now Carly Atkins in third. Yeah, Nicholas Erbrick up into fourth with Speth in fifth. David Ohak is now in sixth place. Johnston in seventh as we now make our way watching on Luke Whitehead making his way in towards that Roger chicane. And the Roger chicane has been a, a, a field for a few instants at least during this race. Yeah, we've seen a, a couple of incidents through the Roger chicane, but Luke Whitehead still leading the pack from Harry Spears behind. But I think Akizi really saw this as an opportunity to revive his race. He had a really good start, didn't have the best uh, middle part of his race, but... I think this is where it really starts to turn around for him. Well, at least that's what he hopes that happens. As we watch Voltec near with, look, just defending his line going into Ascari. This, no, not Ascari, sorry. Going into the Roggio chicane. That really wasn't going to end well. Ashton Cox getting it all sides, all sorts of sideways out of the chicane as he makes his way into the first of the two Lesmos. There is a little bit of a gap forming there. Yeah, and uh, Wojciech Nerverth did just enough there to make sure he kept Ashton Cox behind him. Of course, Ashton Cox caught up in an instant earlier on in this race. He's trying to find his way back through the field. But there is Luke Whitehead leading the way, and how many will pit in now for their mandatory stop? Let's see if anyone comes in. Carly Atkins looks like he's coming into the pit lane then to serve his mandatory stop. Now, of course, fuel is mandatory, but tyres are not. So what are the chances here that these drivers, especially in the sprint race, are going to change tyres. It's going to be very minimal here as Marek Vons battling away with Hamada Akizi. Now these two pitted together and Marek Vons has managed to get the move then on Hamada Akizi, moves ahead and now making our way up towards Parabolica. So much action wherever you look. We're joining now back with the lead battle here. Luke Whitehead still trying to hold off Harry Spears here, making our way through Curva Grande and then onwards towards the Roger chicane. And if there's one thing Luke Whitehead can do well, it's make sure he keeps a hold of a position. Yeah, Luke Whitehead, we've seen a great defensive drive from him right now. And I think uh, the, the good thing is about Luke Whitehead, he doesn't over-defend, he doesn't overdrive the car. He just puts the car in the right positions when he needs to. He doesn't defend if it's unnecessary. Uh, and he'll only defend if he feels like he is faster than the car behind. But you can see just positioning the car in places where Harry Spires gets no opportunity to go for an overtake. We now make our way now down in towards the Curva del Serrano. It looks like we are attempting to go side by side, but Luke Whitehead is just trying to take a defensive line going in towards Ascari then. And uh, Spears here now making his way through. Oh, he, he clonks the uh, 
the sleeping policeman on the inside. It didn't look like it took too much momentum out of him. And in fact, Luke Whitehead running wide on the exit of Ascari looks like it might open up this opportunity for uh, Harry Spires to try and make a way through now down in towards Parabolica. Luke Whitehead's got the inside lie then and Spears looking for a move around the outside. It is possible to get a move done here. He'll be onto the AstroTurf, will he, in that 285 Mercedes. But he'll have now a little bit of a toe here as Luke Whitehead decides it's time for him to come in for his mandatory stop. Still over five minutes of that pit window left and you have to enter the pit lane before that timer expires. Otherwise, you will be subject to a penalty. Penalty. So that is Harry Spears then taking the lead then as we make our way now down in towards the Retafilio chicane for the side max motorworks 285 Mercedes and Marek Vons well he's doing a great job so far of holding up Hamada Akizi as we make our way now up towards Parabolica but Akizi will want that move he's look at this trying to get a nose down the inside of Parabolica then tucking back in just making himself the biggest option possible in Marek's rear view mirror as we make our way now through Parabolica and onwards now towards the start finish straight. So Yannick Erbrick currently in the pits. Then David Ohak is the same. Corolla into the pits. Rassar as well as we'll see drivers emerge from the pit lane there. So Yannick Erbrick looks like he's going to hold on to fifth place. And this is the awkward part when we're coming down towards the Retafilio chicane. As there you can see Akizi looking for a move up the inside of Marek Vons going in towards the Retafilio chicane. But there's contact ahead of them and both of them somehow over Avoid it. Great driving from the two of them there. That looked like the uh, the number 15 Ferrari was that coming through there. It made contact with somebody else. But the fact that Akizi uh, and Vons had to avoid that, both splitting up there. Now, Marek Vons had to go across the track, whereas Akizi had to go around the outside. I wonder what the stewards will make of that one and whether they think Vons has to give up an advantage. Yeah, I mean, you saw him jumping over the corner and he did gain quite a big of an advantage, but I guess you could cut, argue on the other side that he was just trying to avoid the incident and didn't intend to gain any time, but I guess we'll have to see wait, see him wait for the stewards' verdict on that. As we've seen Nat Thomas go up the inside into the Del Roggio chicane. Very nice move done there. It looks like Leaf is now going to be under pressure from every year behind. Yep, and Nat Thomas making it clear he wants to move up the order. 16th place right now in the Omega E Racing Team number 70 Mercedes. But he's got another Mercedes right behind him as well as we make our way onwards now towards the Curva del Serralio. It's Leif right behind him as we make our way underneath the old banking. Let's see then battle for 16th place. Of course, this is a position just outside of the points as we see Malsharek coming into the pits then to serve his mandatory stop following these cars going all the way through Ascari and then onto the short run. Well, it is a relatively short run, all things considered on this track, towards Parabolica. And you can see there Leif didn't quite get the run he wanted on the exit of Ascari there and didn't quite get the run. Luke Whitehead trying to defend from Carly Atkins. They're going to run side by side down towards the Retafilio chicane with Luke Whitehead having the inside line for the initial turn in, but he'll have the outside line going in towards the second part of the chicane, but where he'll go here is park it on the apex of the second part of the chicane and hold on to the position. And Carly Atkins then has really no choice but to give up on that fight for now, but he knows he can have another go. He knows down these straights He's sort of learning. What is Luke doing that I'm not? And how can I get a, a, an overtake done here? As we see uh, a Lamborghini having to defend there as we make our way now onwards towards the uh, uh, Roger chicane. Taking it nice and smooth there. Luke Whitehead in the lead coming into the pits. And Carly Atkins, who is battling for a place in the lead, has now got a position where he's right behind him, right in the toe. And again, Luke Whitehead under pressure only this time by someone completely different. Uh, Harry Spears still hasn't made a stop, neither is Pinchbeck or Dean Vella. Having said that, though, Harry Spears is coming into the pit lane. So one eye on Spears, the other eye on Whitehead. This is going to give a clear indication of how these pit stops are going to go down. Yeah, well, as you said, Luke Whitehead has lost a lot of time there. He's dropped many positions, two drivers ahead. Uh, and if you look at Spears, he's came into the pits now. So I guess we'll have to wait and see where he comes out in relation to the other, drive, uh, other drivers. Jan Nicholas Herberg in the net lead right now. As we see in the bottom right, Spires coming out of the pit lane now. Where's he going to come out in uh, in a company to Jan Nicholas Herberg though? He exits the pit lane now. You can see other drivers overtaken. That did look like a Ferrari. So it may have been a backmarker. But it does look like Spears has came out in the lead. 
Yeah, and quite a healthy advantage as well in towards the Retafilio chicane. So he'll be very happy with that one. Meanwhile, it's... Uh, Battle resumes for Vons and Urquizy then making our way in towards the Retafilio chicane. Both of them are now on the same bit of track as we make our way through the Curva Grande. Urquizy wants to find a way past Varric Vons here. Both of these have been having a great battle so far, making our way through the Curva Grande. And both of them had to avoid an instant going through in towards the Retafilio chicane. They've caught each other back up now. Here comes Urquizy up the inside in towards the Roger chicane, but he backs out of that one. And he's just testing Vons there about leaving a door open. He's just testing the water as they're seeing what can happen. Vons goes defensive then going in towards the first Lesmo here. Akizi having to go the long way around through the first Lesmo but again just can't find a way through. Vons here driving the widest Ferrari I think Monza will ever see. Going through the second Lesmo you can see the car quite twitchy on Akizi on the exit then but he has got the toe of the connection lost Ferrari right ahead of him. Ascar is not really a place you can make a move stick, but if you're brave enough, it, it is possible. As we now make our way towards that, you can see Akizi looking for a move up the inside, but Vons is really trying to close that door, making our way through Ascari now. And Akizi, look at that run he got going through Ascari. Then he got a fantastic run. They're going to run side by side. Upwards we go towards the Parabolica right-hander, which means Akizi is going to be on the outside here. Parag Vons will have the inside. Place your bets on this one. Who's going to come out on top? Akizi can break a little bit later, run a little bit wider, but you can see Vons can get on the power then on the inside to grab the apex. Vons just about able to hold on once again. These two really deadlocked in this fantastic battle. If you noticed uh, the driving style of Marek Vons as uh, Akizi looks up the inside into uh, the Refilio chicane, will he be able to make it stick? And will Spef be able to get involved behind though? And the door is shut very, very impolitely in Akizi's face as Vons holds on to the lead. I was saying, uh, it does look like Spef is going to get involved in this battle. Akizi leaves it a little bit too wide, and that does leave a bit of a gap for the red Vodafone. Mercedes to go up the inside, and that is Akizi onto the grass. A little bit of bumping between the two drivers. Akizi can have a little look into Del Rogier, has to back out of it, and that will be Spef into uh, P4, well, respectively. But what I noticed about Vons is, uh, especially going into that Ascari chicane, he put the car perfectly in the middle of the track so that you couldn't go the inside or the outside. I'll tell you what, though, Akizi was not impressed with Speth there. The lights were absolutely flashing at a rate of knots. Then Nat Thomas battling away with Vishal Patel. Patel, oh, he caught the sleeping policeman there. Goes for a ride over the curbs as well and loses out there. He actually has a half spin as well, as he now has to rejoin the circuit. And that is a danger of those sleeping policemen there. They will disrupt the car there. And the suspension just simply cannot handle them as they now find their way through. Carly Atkins then in sixth place. He's found a way past. Past Luke Whitehead then. So Luke Whitehead was leading this race, decided to leave his pit stop um, later, or sorry, he pitted earlier, but I think because of all this traffic he's had to battle and, and all this battling he has done, it's cost him in the long run, whereas Harry Spears has had clear track all the way through and is able to just hold on to his position and by quite some distance as well. Looking at the back of Simon Speth then as we make our way down the start finish straight, he's got Akizi for company then. Akizi looking for a move, then he'll have to go the long way round in towards the Retafilio chicane. They're both also closing in on Vons ahead as they now make their way towards the first chicane down in towards the braking zone here. Speth has to try and slow the car down. He's got the inside line, but there you can see Akizi has got the move done and he knew he had to get the apex for the second part of the chicane. Akizi gets the position back and his focus now will be on Marek Vons once again. The amazing move for Akizi, but I do not think that Speth is going to take that lying down and as I say that, Speth looking left and right, left and right for any opportunity that he can take could get past the Ferrari that's ahead of him. But as you said, Akizi, he sets his sights on Michael, on, on Vons ahead. And let's see if he's able to catch that gap and make the overtake. Yeah, Marek Vons currently holding on to third place, but he might not for doing much longer if he keeps finding the grass like that, because that's an invitation to Hamada Akizi, and he will not think twice about accepting it. Now we go through the curve of Del Seraglio and onwards then towards Ascari. Once again in the slipstream, he will go down towards Ascari because he's not quite close enough to, to try a move just yet, but uh, in due course, he will try one. 
down in towards the Skari we will go. You can see two different lines being taken through there. Akizi really attacking the Apex there. And he's, look at that, reaping the rewards. He's a bit closer now to Marek Vonsen. This is going to be a great battle for third place as we head towards stages of this race. Just under six minutes to go in this race. Harry Spears still leads. Jan Nicholas Erbrick is in second place. And we're watching this battle for third place. Marek Vons is currently in third. Hamada Akizi is fourth. Meanwhile, we jump to Dean Vela because he's found a way past Vishal Patel as we make our way towards Ascari. Patel looking for an inside move and then decides against it going in towards Ascari. Just a little bit of an intimidation tactic used by these drivers, that's for sure. Flashing the lights giving a nose down the inside and seeing how you react. It's all a bit of a tactic to try and disrupt you from your normal racing line. And when it works, you really, really do see that it works. Yeah, I think we see from a lot of drivers going for the fake dive bombs, sends drivers off their normal racing line. And uh, the driver who does make that uh, move in the first place says, thank you very much for the free position and drives on by. But to be honest, if I was a key in Akizi's shoes right now, I wouldn't be too bothered with P4, but it doesn't look like Akizi's going to be happy with it as he hits his way in through past Marek Vons, taps the rear end of Vons, unsettles the car and goes around the outside. Interesting move there. Well, Akizi takes away third place for now. Marek Vons down to fourth and Simon Speth is watching on with his popcorn and seeing what's going to happen with this battle. He's already taken advantage of Akizi then taking a move then as Dean Vela goes through and that's a drive-through penalty for Vishal Patel now we haven't had anything from race control just yet so we'll assume that's going to be four track limits we'll see if we can confirm that later on but at this late stage in the race that might turn into a 30 second penalty towards the end we'll have to get confirmation of that very soon but there you can see Marek Vons has actually lost touch with uh, Akizi ahead of him and now has started to fall into the clutches of Simon Speth as we make our way on towards Parabolica just over four minutes to go in this race. It's Harry Spears in the lead and Nicholas Erbrick in second place. Okizi now up into third place and Race Control have confirmed that it's an in-game awarded penalty for Vishal Patel for track limits. Multiple violations of the track limits. So that is a slap on the wrist with the drive through. Yeah, that's a big shame for Patel there to pick up that in-game drive through That's really going to cost him some major time there, especially in the closing stages of this race where drivers are just starting to get close together. It's really going to hinder um, his performance. But as we watch Spears, four seconds in the lead now from Jan Niklas Ubrich. But we saw Ubrich not get the best of starts, but he's definitely made his way back through the field, P2. An amazing drive from the Lamborghini driver. Yeah, it really has, as uh, he's currently in second place there. As you said, 4.3 seconds. But, I mean, Harry Spears has just done everything right in this race. He was battling away with Luke Whitehead and decided against maybe trying to uh, extend his stint. Uh, sorry, pitting in early, I should say, because he knew about the traffic around him. That clear air he had at the front has paid dividends. As there's Vishal Patel serving his drive through penalty. He's decided to serve it during the race as uh, he will now rejoin further down the order. But uh, there you can see that's a battle for third place involving four, five cars, multiple cars at the very least. So don't turn off from this one. We've got two and a half minutes plus the end of that lap decide third place at the moment it's advantage Akizi Vons there you can see in fourth place Speth in fifth Carly Atkins in sixth place Luke Whitehead in seventh place and David Ohak just slightly further behind he's 2.3 seconds back in uh, eighth place there but uh, if battling happens up ahead he can definitely close in that gap as they now make their way on towards Parabolica yeah as they make their way on to Parabolica as you said around the final corner Marek Vons still in P4 Akizi is starting to get away a little bit now. So Vons, if he wants to get this P3 that desperately, he really needs to put his head down. He really, really does. And he hasn't got long left to try and catch back up and then let alone overtake Akizi once again. It's all that effort into trying to defend and try and make sure that Akizi doesn't find a way past. Well, Akizi has found a way past. And for Vons, it's plan B. Try and catch up. But you can see the pace of Akizi then. He's just building that gap bit by bit, sector by sector, lap by lap. And he's managing to keep himself ahead with meanwhile Simon Speth looking on and trying to see if he can find a way past for fourth place. We've got less than 90 seconds on the clock then. So to me, that's going to be this lap and next lap 
before we see the chequered flag. We'll have to confirm that once we see the white flag for the final lap of the race. But there is Akizi making his way in through the first Lesmo. Currently holding on to third and doing enough right now. There's Kirsten Ebeya down the inside going in towards the Retafilio chicane. But he misses the exit oh. onto the gravel he will go. And there's two cars getting caught up with each other there. That could have taken advantage of Ebeya's off-track excursion. But in the end didn't. I think that was Malsharek and Corolla battling away for 16th and 17th place. And Ebeya gets away with his little bit of a mistake there on the gravel and drives away to try and score one point. There's Dean Riley in the SimSport Mercedes currently in 24th place. Uh, two and a half seconds back from Diego Ribaldi, but he makes his way towards the line. 30 seconds left on the clock and we're all eyes on that uh, 285 car of Harry Spears. So he will go round for one more lap. So here we go then. White flag will come out. We are on to the final lap of this race then. It's Harry Spears leading the way in the Sidemax Motorworks car. I mean, it's been a great performance for him and decided to stay out, take advantage of that clear air and it's paid dividends in the end. Yep, you just stay clear of all the traffic. Five seconds remaining on the clock. This is going to be the final lap for Harry Spears. Nearly a five second gap now. So just putting down more and more pace as the race goes on. Harry Spears absolutely dominant out here in Monza in the sprint race. Will he be able to do the same in the feature race? I guess we'll have to see. We won't have long to wait to see either. There's uh, Malsharek then making his way towards Parabolica. You can see there's a car going up his inside. I think that's Corolla. So these two are really battling Hammer and Tong for 16th place, making our way now on towards the start finish line. There is Corolla right in the slipstream of Malsharek then as we make our way towards that start finish line. These guys are now on their final lap of the race. Corolla looking for a move up the inside, going in towards the Retafilio chicane. He's got a Bayer right ahead of him as well. Can he get his braking zone right? He brakes later than the Lamborghini going in towards the Retafilio chicane. Great move from Corolla there. Can he keep a hold of that position on the exit of the Retafilio chicane? I think he can, you know. A really good move from Corolla there, moving him up into 16th place. He now gets a chance he hasn't got long though to try and grab 15th place off of Kirsten Abaya right ahead of him as they make their way towards the Roger Shake but Corolla's going to have to be looking in that rear view mirror. He's late breaking again, going round the outside this time of Kirsten Abea. But meanwhile, we turn our attention to the leader of this race because he's making his way around Parabolica now for the final time of this sprint race. And it's going to be Harry Spears who takes the win in the sprint race, flashing his lights. He's very happy with that to take the win here in this sprint race. It's going to be Jan Nicholas Erbrick in second place then. And Hamada Akizi should hold on to third place with a whole host of cars battling away behind. Meanwhile, then Kirsten Abea is still trying to hold on. This is for the last points paying position of the race. Then Corolla looking to go round the outside, going in towards Ascari. Too wide through Ascari. There's going to be a lot of respect here. Corolla with the confidence gets the position then and making his way through Ascari. Did he get a good line through there? He's got to get a great exit up towards Parabolica. Looks like he's done that to perfection. And Corolla here has left it to the last possible moment to try and take a point away. And it looks like now heading up towards Parabolica. Marcus Corolla will grab the last points paying position then. Meanwhile, we've got uh, Malsharek and Cox then battling away for 18th place, making our way through. There you can see that, uh, at sorry, uh, Abea goes wide at the exit of Parabolica as they all make their way towards the line then. So Corolla does grab that last point. Abea 16th, Malsharek 17th, Ashton Cox in 18th. And that's going to be the most intense battle you'll ever see for the last points paying position. But it's Harry Spears who gets the win here in the sprint race. A fantastic drive for him and a fantastic race from all involved. Well, we're going to have the feature race very, very shortly. And in the meantime, we will leave you with the uh, the song we heard at the very start uh, and beginning of the race. Uh, the song that's dedicated, of course, to William Marsh, who sadly passed away on March the 22nd. And we'll go to that song right now. to hurt anymore 
The song there made up by Glenn Orpheus, of course, we're racing tonight for uh, William Marsh, who today would have been his 28th birthday. So we wish him and his family all the best in this really troubling time. And of course, it's a huge reminder to 
us to everybody in the sim racing community and everyone around the world make sure when it comes to mental health speak to your friends don't stay in silence don't suffer in silence reach out to anybody if you're based in the uk of course you can call the samaritans if you're in a mental health crisis the number is 116123 if you're watching in malta the number to call is 179 and you'll be connected to people that are capable and qualified of helping you through a mental health crisis the important message for everyone involved is to make sure you don't stay silent about your mental health kai of course we're racing for william tonight and i think tonight we're all united that was a great race yeah that was an amazing race lots of action uh lots of drama as well we saw a couple of uh give or take uh if he overtakes, but you know that we always see this in the GT cars. It's always a bit of Robin is racing, as they say. So I think that brings a more exciting aspect to the commentary. Door to door, I think, is the best way to describe that. <laughs> and I'm, I can't get over the two cars that had to avoid an incident at the Retafilio chicane whilst they were still battling away <laughs> for third place. It just shows you how much concentration you need to have in these scenarios. Yeah, any lack of concentration there, and I'm sure that would have been at least one of them into the back of the other two cars that were battling. But both cars and also the other two cars that were battling all managed to survive. So uh, that was a miracle and amazing driving from all of them. I think I may have been a bit too harsh on uh, Marek Vons there, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll forgive me afterwards. We're going to go on to the track now. And of course, this is the full formation lap, a formation lap of honour, which we will be silent for to pay our respects to the late William Marsh.
for William. Let's get ourselves ready then for this feature race here. One hour on the clock and more points on offers for these drivers. Once again, it's Harry Spears on the left of your picture, Carly Atkins on the right. Carly Atkins will be hoping for a better start in this feature race than he did get in the sprint race earlier on. The cars now make their way up the grid, then on towards the start finish line. Where they'll be met by the green flag and we'll be able to get this hour of racing underway. Harry Spears then will get the jump then. Green flag racing. We are racing here at Monza and it's another good start from Harry Spears. This time again, Carly Atkins, he gets a much better start this time around and decides to go into the toe of Harry Spears. On the run now, down towards the Retafilio chicane. He's got the inside line now, has Harry Spears. Down in towards turn one we go. Can we keep it clean for a second time in a row then? Through we go, the Retafilio chicane. It's getting all bunched up behind them though in the background there. Was there a bit of contact in the background? At the moment though, Harry Spears leads the way. Carly Atkins, yes, it's carnage behind them there as all manner of cars are across the gravel, across the grass and across the track as well. Mausharek we're watching there uh, go through the bollards then to rejoin the track. Uh, well, he was around the wrong way in the first place. I don't think he wanted to wait around any longer to go through those, uh, or around those bollards anyway. But there you can see Mausharek then is up into uh, or down the order then. Uh, all the way down i think that's 26th place if i can make that out right and it is and he misses his braking spot then in towards the first part of the roger chicane it's not been a great start for him rissar will try and go round the outside to take another position meanwhile then harry spears still leads the way carly atkins in second place hamada akizi gets a much better start this time around he holds on to third place luke whitehead in fourth place simon speth in fifth jan nicholas erbrick in sixth marek vons in seventh david ohak in eighth mccain in ninth and pinchbeck rounds off the top ten there's Michael Perez-Sada then, who's having to uh, hold off Kirsten Abeya then, making her way in towards Ascari for the very first time in this feature race. And Abeya, that's a really nice move from Abeya. Managed to get the grip, get the line, and get into the points. Then, oh, we got another car off. I think that was Vishal Patel, who finds himself off into the gravel then. You can see him in the background just about rejoining onto the circuit then, but he falls all the way down from what was 18th place down to 24th. Harry Spears, though, leads the way after the first lap of racing. The number 158 car is in trouble on the exit of a skull, but will try to rejoin the battle. Carly Atkins in second place. Hermana Akizi rounds off our podium. So let's get a replay of what happened at the very start of this race. So there's Wojciech Nürnberg making his way now down towards the Retafilo chicane. We're watching him right now. But you can see Kirsten Abeya in that uh, blue and red Ferrari then has to go onto the grass then. So he decides to take evasive action onto the grass. Ah, you see Wojciech gets a little bit of a, a spin there, but the instance happened ahead of him and there's just really nowhere for him to go whatsoever. Reina Rousseau, you can see in the uh, bright pink McLaren there in a little bit of trouble as well. A little bit of a messy start further down the midfield. But uh, in the end, it uh, looks like uh, everybody, I think, we've still got all 29 runners in this race. There is Harry Spears, your race leader, leading by just over one second. And uh, Kai, at some point, you're going to have to take this mic off from me, otherwise you'll never get it. <laughs> well, there you can see Harry Spears then making his way once again through the order and on towards the curve at Del Seraglio. Downwards again towards... Ascari there, Silver Pyramids then, the Ostodian. The, uh, the uh, lovely tribute there, the RIP Marsh Mercedes, the full black tribute car. Making his way now on towards Ascari. He's having to defend from Leif behind though. As we make our way through, there's Jan Ryler who had a tough time in the sprint race. He'll be hoping for a little bit better then in this feature race. He's going side by side with the number 205. That's Corolla, who we saw grab the final point in the sprint race in dramatic circumstances. They're currently battling away for 20th place at this moment in time, but you never know. There could be more action on the way as we make a way once again towards Berka. Of course, we've got one stop that the drivers have to make in this one in that 10 minute pit stop window. So we're watching Christian Malsharek now as he makes his way on towards the Roger Chicane. So this gives us a bit of a, a clearer idea of what happened. He makes his way there. Oh, there's a huge hit there. Vishal Patel uh, on uh, one of the cars there. I think that was Nervith. So he, he was in trouble yet again as uh, they made their way in towards the Roger Chicane. Just looked like Patel missed his braking point and there was nowhere for him to stop then. Uh, McCain then, the number 334 car, has got himself a drive-through penalty. We saw a drive-through penalty uh, further down the order. Uh, we'll have to confirm who that is. Meanwhile, Jan-Nicholas Erbrick battling away with Simon Spieth, that is, we make our way in towards 
the Roger Chicane, and he uh, loses out on that fight for now. So Speth is up a position. Jimmy Holm and the Treble uh, Seven homing missile for uh, McLaren making his way through, but we've got uh, one of the Mercedes there. I think it was Perisada. It was Perisada missing his breaking point. And he goes down the order, and uh, that's going to be another position for Corolla, who now finds himself into 19th place. Perisada and uh, Ryla go side by side, then going through the first Lesma. They're going to go side by side through the second Lesma as well. Why not? Why not? As they make their way through. I think they have made their way through. Yes, Perisada, though, gets a, a little bit of a tank slapper. And you can see in the background there, Rena Rassar in that pink McLaren gets onto the gravel, loses a couple, a couple of positions there. As we see here, battling all the way through. Johnston looking for a move up the inside, but no way through for him. Marcus Carolla, you can tell he didn't have the greatest qualifying because he's really moving his way up the order. He's got Jimmy Holm ahead of him in the treble seven McLaren. In the slipstream he goes in the Corolla sim racing car making his way up towards Parabolica. He'll have to go the long way around if he wants to move on Jimmy Holm then. Round the outside, he will go through Parabolica. Can he try and hang on in there? Try and get a better run down the start, finish straight. Try and carry more speed through on the exit, maybe. Down the start, finish straight, we will go. And there is Corolla using that grunt of the Mercedes to try and get him at least level with Jimmy Holm then, going down towards the first corner. It's a long, long way down. And you can see a little bit of slipstream being used from Dean Vella as well. Meanwhile, you can see the picture in picture, more battles going on. Marcus Corolla gets the move done and Corolla so confident on these breaks as well. That's how he's getting most of his positions. He's now up into 18th place. So really, really good stuff from him. Simon Smith is in sixth place then. Jan Niklas Erbrick up back into fifth. Meanwhile, you've got uh, Marek Vons in seventh place, David Ohak in eighth, with Pinchbeck in ninth and McCain rounding off the top ten. There is Marcus Carolla. Oh, he leaves his breaking late once again up the inside of Dean Vella. They make contact there. Dean Vella misses the second part of the chicane. Carolla has to hold on to 18th place for now. Dean Vella thought, there's no way I'm making that second part of the chicane, so missed it entirely for now. Uh, Dean Riley then in the Sim Sport car has got Leif for company. Uh, just to take you through those penalties, uh, the number 331, so that is McCain. He's got a drive-through penalty for the incident caused at uh, the first corners, uh, calling an avoidable major incident. So that's the message from the steward. He will get a drive-through penalty for that one. Dean Riley, meanwhile, then making his way through. He's got Nat Thomas for company as well as we make our way now up towards Parabolica for another time through. Don't forget as well, there is a mandatory pit stop that these drivers will have to make. And it is in that 10 minute pit stop window around about halfway through the race. So we will have the pit stop window opening around about 35 minutes left on the clock. Of course, if you like this racing, make sure to visit worldproracing.com for weekly casual races and races for any ability and all are welcome. Make sure you head over there and make sure that to see which race is for you. And make sure we hope to see you on a track very, very soon. Dean Riley then making his way down there. Jimmy Holm is under pressure from uh, yeah, uh, Ryler here as he makes his way now down towards the Retafilio chicane. There you can see Dean Vella looking for a move once again on Corolla. He's got the inside line on Corolla going through the Retafilio chicane, but they've made contact there. Corolla is around, and you see that Jimmy Holm has to take evasive action. He goes up a position there, up into 17th place. I mean, there wasn't really a lot on his plate in terms of where he needed to go. And to be honest with you, with evasive action like that, he felt like that was the only way he could go. But the two of them come together then further down the order. And uh, that's put a damper on their battle. Uh, Simon Speth, though, meanwhile, seems like he's falling down the order at this moment in time. Ninth place at the moment, and now he's under pressure uh, from the car behind. So let's see who that is. I think it's one of the Ash Trois cars as we make our way through. Onwards we go down through the Curva del Seraglio. And then we go under the old banking and then towards Ascari. So Simon Speth then, through we go. And yeah, he's falling down the order. I wonder if he's made a mistake out somewhere because he was running as high as sixth before. Now he's all the way down in ninth place. And so we now make our way through. So let's have a replay of uh, Dean Vella then. So this is the incident with himself and Corolla. So you see here Dean Vella looking for a move down the inside. He left his braking late. Did he make the corner? He did, you know. Well, he clouts the curb and, yeah, it was a little bit of a pincer movement from both drivers there. We'll leave that to the stewards to decide what happened there. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see some racing action once again. 
uh, as we left it. Harry Spears was leading the way. Carly Atkins was one and a half seconds behind with Hamada Akizi there. And then we can see Dean Vella. I think we are back live again. So good to see then Dean Vella and Jan Ryler making their way now down the start finish straight. These two have been battling Hammer and Tong down towards the first corner. They go once again. And as you can see, Dean Vella's on the outside this time. Jan Ryler's got the inside line. And does Jan Ryler take it? He takes a clout of curb as well. And that won't help him with his line all the way through. So Dean Vella is able to hold on to the position for now and takes the outside line through Curva Grande and make sure he is able to keep a hold of that position. And Jan Ryler clouting the curb there really did offset the car. And any chance of him really having that position is all gone. Vishal Patel trying to find a way through as well as we make our way in towards the Rogers chicane. Jan Ryler loses a position. Patel makes his way through. Meanwhile, we've got Rissar in the background finding a position. I think that was Nerverth as well he found the position on and moves up a position. Vishal Patel up to 20th now. As we now make our way through in towards the first Lesmo, there you can see, uh, sorry, that was uh, Rissar who got the position behind. He now moves up a position in the 690. I'm going to say uh, McLaren as we've got a uh, Ferrari off in the background. Now, was that Ribaldi off in the background, lighting up the rear tyres? It was Diego Ribaldi. He comes back to the pit lane, and uh, it'll be sad to see if that's the end of his race as he's uh, instantly come back to the pit lane. Of course, you get some time penalty added on because uh, it's, uh, it's almost the equivalent of towing you back to the pit lane before you can then work on the car again. So hopefully we'll get to see that Ferrari back out on track. And hopefully we do get to see him out there once again. So we've got 48 minutes or so left on the clock. And you can see Vishal Patel then in the PC Boys racing car. Jan Ryle has gone up the inside. And is he going to take that position away? Yes, he is. Down the start for the straight will go. But you can see the power of the Mercedes coming back. Going down the start, finish straight. You can see Jan Ryler's just about got a nose ahead, but Patel is not going to give up on that battle that easily. Down towards the Retafilio chicane. Jan Ryler's got the inside line. Vichel Patel's got the outside line. Patel will then add the inside for the second part of the chicane. He'll try and park it on the apex. That's exactly what he's done. And he's got the position back from Jan Ryler. Back up into 20th place behind them as well. Uh, Nerverth is right behind looking to try and take advantage of uh, any incident that happens between the two of them. Jimmy Hole, meanwhile, get to move on Malsharek then. And Malsharek goes down to 18th place. Uh, meanwhile, we have word from the stewards then at the uh, number 295 car. Uh, we'll be receiving a 10-second penalty for causing an avoidable instance. So that's Vishal Patel on the number 8 car of Perisada. So that is, uh, that's what that penalty will be for David Ohak, meanwhile making his way through as we've got a car just getting out of the way there. I think that's one of the uh, back markers. I think that was Corolla just trying to make his way, just trying to get out of the way. David Ohak then, we're watching on as he tries to defend. He's got Pidgebeck right behind him as we now make our way up towards Parabolica. Once again, Pidgebeck looking for a move up the inside, but David Ohak is not going to make that easy whatsoever. See Pidgebeck still trying to find an inside line then, going towards the start-finish line. David Ohak has the uh, left-hand side of the track and just about has the grunt to stay ahead. Pinchbeck now will tuck into the toe and try and use a little bit of straight line speed there. You see, as soon as he comes out of the slipstream there, he starts falling back a little bit. So he really, really doesn't want that. Down in towards the Retafilio chicane we go. Pinchbeck has got an inside line. The Lamborghini of David O'Hack leaves him the room but then parks it on the apex. And as you can see, Speth has rejoined this battle as well as they all now make their way through the Curva Grande, almost a quarter of the way through this race. And uh, Harry Spears leads the way by 1.4 seconds. David Ohak, though, has got his rear view mirrors full of two Mercedes. One of them is Pinchbeck. The other one is Speth. Pinchbeck is looking for a move down the inside in towards the Roger Chicane then. He'll be on the outside for the second part, but he gets the move done then. Pinchbeck up a position. Speth is trying to take advantage as well as we make our way up towards the first Lesmo. You can see then Speth up the inside. With that Vodafone Mercedes, can he get that move done? Can he hold on? Yes, he can. So in the space of two corners, three corners if you're picky, David Ohak has fallen now down to ninth place. Two good moves from two Mercedes then, and it gets them up the order. Uh, we've got also a, a 10-second penalty awarded by the stewards for Dean Vella well, with an incident causing a collision with car number 205. Now, uh, that should be uh, on the board there, and it is. So that'll be added 
onto the race time there and served in the pit lane. So there's Harry Spears making his way on towards the start finish straight. And of course, we've got about 10 minutes until the pit window does open. So the drivers will be keeping one eye on the clock for that one. 10 minute window for the mandatory stop and refueling is a mandatory requirement in those stops. Tires are not. And now a long race, you can see here, uh, tires shouldn't be an issue. They shouldn't really be an issue. They shouldn't have to be changed. It costs you a lot of time. Meanwhile, Carly Atkins misses his braking point and goes over the uh, the curbing there. Takes a couple of uh, couple of sleeping policemen with him as well, I think. Jimmy Holm now trying to hold on to 15th place. Now he's got Silver Pyramids right behind. He's also got Malsharek battling away for 15th place. This is for the last points paying position. Jimmy Holm has the inside line. They're going in towards the Retafilio chicane. Meanwhile, further behind, we've got Jan Ryler. I think he's battling away with Vishal Patel. He's got the outside line going through, but you can see there Patel just about holds on. Meanwhile then, Nerverth tried to find a way through, but couldn't find a way through because there was a car right in front of him. Had to stop the car, put the anchors on. And couldn't quite take advantage of that one. Jimmy Hole then is up into the points. Mausharek has got to move past on Silver Pyramids then as we make our way through on towards the Roger Chicane. And then onwards once again towards the first Lesmo. Jimmy Holm does enough then to make sure he has a point paying position. So as it stands then, we've got Harry Spears in the lead of this race. Carly Atkins in second place. Amada Akizi has closed in on Carly Atkins for that battle for second place. Pinchbeck though has not got away from Speth as, as much as he may have liked. Going through now Ascari and onwards towards Parabolica. And we see here now David Ohak wants those positions back. He's in the slipstream of Simon Speth as we make our way on towards Parabolica. And the Lamborghini find a way past through Parabolica. We will go the number 43 Simsport racing car of Chris Pinchbeck. Making his way through Parabolica. He'll be having one eye in the mirrors then. Meanwhile, Hamada Akizi making life difficult. Carly Atkins making his way in towards the Retafilio chicane. And... Uh, I'm delighted to say that I think we have Kai Bacini back with us. Kai, you seem to be having a couple of issues, but glad to have you back. Yeah, I'm having a couple of issues with my PC right now, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to stick around until the end of the race. But yeah, it seems like we have a great battle on our hands right now. Mara Kizi battling with Carly Atkins. We didn't see him have the best of the sprint race, but let's see if he's able to redeem himself in the feature race. Yeah, he's having to be put under pressure from Hamada Akizi as we make our way through the first Lesmo. And these two battling just allows Harry Spears to just open up that gap bit by bit. The gap is now 2.1 seconds from himself and second place. Luke Whitehead lurking in the distance as well, looking to take advantage. Yeah, Nicholas Eric's fallen away a little bit, starting to become a race of his own at the moment. He's six seconds off the car ahead. He's 2.3 ahead of the car behind. So a bit of a lonely race for him at this moment in time. Carly Atkins then making his way in through Ascari. And again, Akiz is right on his tail here as we make our way through. Akiz, he wants that position. We saw him battle hard for his position towards the end of the race and all through the race of the sprint race. Now, this time, he's in third place, looking to try and take away second place from Carly Atkins. And again, he's caught in this scenario where the more he battles Carly Atkins, the more work he has to do to put in to try and catch up to Harry Spears again as we make our way through Parabolica. And again, the Ferrari of Erbrick will be tucked into the slipstream. We've got a replay here. So this is Vishal Patel making his way through Ascari then. So it's through the right-hander, then through the left-hander at turn 10. Oh, the car snaps on him there. He spins around and there's absolutely nothing the number 64 of Nerverth could do about that one. It has not been Nerverth's race at all. Everything he's done just seems to be another car right in front of him spun across the track absolutely nothing he could do about that one again but fair play to him i think he's still running he's still rolling that car yep still managing to keep it on the track right now carly atkins still having a good battle with hamada akizi man just to make his way past though so atkins drops down to p3 but i'm sure he'll be looking for that p2 back very soon harry spears once again though has a humongous lead and absolutely dominating right now. Yeah, 2.6 seconds looks very, very healthy for Harry Spears as we're not long away from the pit window opening. We've got about five minutes left until that pit window opens. So 
So the drivers will be keeping one eye on that clock and making sure that they pit at the exact right time. And lessons will be learned from the sprint race about when to pit and try and prioritise clear air wherever possible. Whether that means you have to pit to get that clear air or stay out as long as possible to take advantage of the clear air left behind by other drivers. We're watching Nat Thomas then. He's under pressure from Leif as we make our way through. This is Alex Leif trying to move then down towards Ascari going side by side. We've got cars going side by side up ahead as well. As we see, that is uh, David Ohak trying to hold off there. Meanwhile, Nat Thomas holding on then as he holds on to position then of Alex Leif, who did momentarily have his nose ahead, but Nat Thomas had some good defensive wits about him to keep a hold of that position. David Ohak is under pressure from Dean Riley as they make their way up towards Parabolica as well. You can see in the picture in picture, just in the bottom right of your screen. Great way of watching two battles at once. Nat Thomas, though, has just about pulled the lead over Alex Leif at the moment. And meanwhile, Dean Riley is looking to put the pressure on David Ohak going down towards the Retifilio chicane. Let's see what happens here. Dean Riley moves to the inside line. Then David Ohak will have to stick to his racing line. And there you can see Dean Riley just lift off there. Not willing to make that move stick just yet. Nat Thomas, meanwhile, is a little bit clear of Alex Leif then. For the moment, Alex Leif looking to see if he can put some good laps in to get back onto the tail of Nat Thomas. Yeah, that sounds like a good job from him. The Mercedes versus Mercedes. They are surrounded by the Ferrari cars behind, though. McEwing he is six seconds off the driver ahead, so he has quite a bit of catching up to do if he wants to get involved in that battle. And who's out off up ahead? That looks like Harry Spire's having a little bit of a moment there. So the gap crawling down just a little bit. Urquizy, he can smell that victory getting even closer now. Well, Urquizy still has a job to do because not only has he got Harry Spears to try and uh, close in on, and as you said, rightfully said, half a second now has been cut out of that lead advantage. But Carly Atkins, oh, we got a spinner. Was that Luke Whitehead going around in the background? It was Luke Whitehead losing it at Ascari and will have to try and find his way back onto the track. Then I think he will. I think he will rejoin in fourth. But Jan Niklas Erbrecht will be mighty close behind him then as he now makes his way up towards Parabolica. But yeah, a rare mistake from Luke Whitehead to go around like that. In fact, Erbrecht got past. That was Vons right behind him. So he's fallen down to fifth place. Jan Niklas Erbrecht up to fourth. And Luke Whitehead will be absolutely kicking himself about that one. Yeah, that was a simple mistake made there by Luke Whitehead. And I'm sure he'll be... Uh really annoyed with himself for making that mistake there was no need for uh for that at all and there was no reason for it apart from driver error but as you said half a second has been taken out of the lead for harry spires but i mean i'm guessing that i'm guessing that's just driven him more to push even harder to build that gap even more yeah, because the gap's now gone back up to 2.6 seconds. So uh, if it was a mistake, it's certainly woken him back up and it's made him push even harder, more than he was before. Simon Speth then currently in seventh place. He's got Chris Finchbeck for company. David Ohak in ninth and Dean Riley in tenth. And they're all battling away for seventh place. The four cars making their way on towards the Roger Chicane. 37 minutes of this race left. We're about two minutes away from the pit window opening. So what will happen there then, I wonder. Simon Speth making his way up towards the first Lesmo. And you can see Chris Pinchbeck just holding on then. Just making sure he's there. Just making sure he's uh, causing a bit of a nuisance then to Speth up ahead. But Speth looks like he's handling it very well. So 36 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Harry Spears in the lead by 3.2 seconds from Hamada Akizi. It's Carly Atkins in third. Jan Nicholas Erbrecht in fourth. Luke Whitehead looking to recover from his mistake at the exit of Ascari in fifth. Marek Vons in sixth. We're watching Simon Speth in seventh place. Chris Pinchbeck in eighth. David Ohak in ninth. And Dean Riley rounds off our top 10 so far in this race. As you can see there, Chris Pinchbeck getting a little bit onto the gravel there. I think. When the drivers get onto the gravel like that, they can just about get away with it. Yeah, the gravel doesn't seem to be causing a massive issue for uh, for a few of the cars. We've seen quite a few people just catching it with their wheels, not really uh, adventuring too far into the gravel trap. So it doesn't seem like a massive issue for the drivers. Of course, it will lose them a tiny bit of time, but it, I don't think it will lose them that much. And I think it is survivable. But David Ohak under a lot of pressure. From Riley behind, Riley goes to the outside in the Mercedes. You can just see the top speed of the Lamborghini pulling in front once again. Ohak manages to hold his line and manages to defend his position. 
Yeah, good job from him. Meanwhile, Jimmy Holm tries to take away 14th place from Kirsten Abeo. He's got the slipstream of Tom McEwing up ahead as well as we make our way now down in towards the Retafilio chicane. Sorry, that's not uh, uh, Tom McEwing. That's a, that's a back marker out there. But in any case, he's taken advantage of the slipstream there and gets the position up. So Jimmy Hull moves up into 14th place. Meanwhile, David Ohak once again has to be on the defence from Dean Riley, breaking later than the Mercedes in the number two car. And he manages to hold on to ninth place. But all this defending he's doing, he has to focus on defending and can't focus it on attacking Chris Pinchbeck. Now, though, he's got a good run through the first Lesmo, now making our way through the second Lesmo. Maybe that might be a different story. We've already seen that the Lamborghini does have the straight line speed advantage over these Mercedes. So if you add in the, the amount of tow that that Lamborghini is getting, in theory, should be able to make the move stick. Pit window is now open now. Mandatory stop will be on the cards for all drivers as Harry Spears then makes his way through Parabolica once again. First time the pit window is open as he passes. We'll have to wait and see what he does. He, in the last race, wanted to stay out and, well, he stays out again. I think uh, we're going to see a repeat of the sprint race for him. He's going to leave it as late as possible to serve his mandatory stop. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a fair bet to make because, uh, to be honest, it worked for him in the sprint race and he's hoping that it works for him in the... Uh, in the feature race so he is going to leave it as long as he can before he makes his mandatory pit stop as there was no need to go in any earlier than you need to. David Ohak is into the pits then to serve his mandatory stop. He's the first person to serve his mandatory stop and will make it into the pit lane there. So have to wait and see how he gets on. So too does Nat Thomas, Alex Leif and Tom McEwing all into the pits then to serve their mandatory stop at the earliest possible time. There's Kirsten Abeya there looking to put pressure on Jimmy Holm as we make our way now down in towards the Retafilio chicane. Jimmy Holm just about withstands the pressure there. Make sure he has a good exit out of the Retafilio on towards the Curva Grande. 13th place for him so far in this race. Uh, or he was before those pit stops. It's 10th place right now, making our way on towards the Roger Chicane. And you can see there, Kirsten Abeya is not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, Abeya, he is going to stick around there, even though we saw Holm make that overtake. I'm sure that Kirsten Abeya will not be letting that go that easily. The number three Ferrari will be chasing down that P10 as it is just extra points at the end of the day. And... You never know what's going to happen at the front, so you can do with every position you can get. Really can, as uh, Jimmy Holm tries to hold on to position there. Kirsten Abeya making life difficult for Jimmy Holm as he makes his way now down the Curva del Seraglio. Onwards we go once again towards Ascari. And uh, the, uh, the homing missile treble seven McLaren just holding on there as we make our way in towards Ascari once again. Malsharek as well in the background looking to try and close in on this battle because, of course, the more these two battle of Holm and Abeya, the more chance there is of Malsharek closing up on the gap. Chris Pinchbeck then has got Dean Riley for company as we make our way through Parabolica and onwards towards the start finish straight. Let's see how many drivers pit in here. And I think uh, Dean Riley, yes, he does come into the pit from 10th place, or sorry, 9th place that was into the pits he will go to serve his mandatory stop clearly thinking that maybe he can get some sort of undercut maybe he can rejoin in clear air the problem is if you look at that map there there's not many opportunities to rejoin with a clear track ahead of you yeah you can see that the pretty much the whole track has been held up by drivers in their positions obviously with it being uh, pretty much halfway through the race now uh, more drivers are spread out, which means that most of the track is taken up, which means that uh, the drivers at the front that want to pit into fresh air, that isn't really going to happen for them. You saw there Arturas uh, Medvedevas. As, uh, he, I think he was being put a lap on by Marek Vons, and Vons there was moving over in the braking zone there, so uh, millimetrically just about making that stick and there you can see that is Jan Niklas Erbrick ahead as well there's Hamada Akizi then in second place 3.4 seconds behind Harry Spears at the moment and still under pressure from Carly Atkins as we make our way now up towards Parabolica uh, there you can see the lapped car there of Reina Rassar in the 690 McLaren making his way now up towards Parabolica Feeding the car in, making sure that the grip doesn't fall away from you on the exit as we make our way now on towards the start-finish straight. We'll see if any of these drivers come in. Yes, they do. Akizi and Atkins into the pits then from second and third. See what Luke Whitehead does. I mean, he was caught out early on 
by an early stop. But he will come into the pits. So too will Jan Nicholas Erbrick into the pits. They will go. So Luke Whitehead decided to leave it until about halfway through the pit window to pit in rather than at the earliest possible moment. So Harry Spears once again has a clearer track and pretty much no one behind him at this moment in time. It's just him out there to put in some lap times. Yeah, and I think with that lower fuel being in the car right now, these low, these uh, these next few laps are really going to be crucial, depending on uh, what times his peers are doing out on track. Obviously, Akizi and Atkins are the drivers he needs to be worrying about right now. But with the lower fuel in the Mercedes right now, this is his chance to bang in some lap times. Yeah, Harry Spears using all of that kerb on the outside there of the first Lesmo. Now in towards uh, the second Lesmo. And again, a little bit onto the gravel there, but he won't be too concerned about that one. He'll just be focused on making sure that the laps are as clean as possible and as quick as possible, which he has been putting in pretty much all day so far as he now makes his way on towards Ascari once again here for the uh, 17th time in this race. Making his way through, making it look easy as well. Onwards towards Parabolica, he will go. The number treble three car is in trouble. That's Jan Ryler. That's at the Roger Chicane. I assume that's going to be getting out of the way of other cars. But no, it's not. He's come back to the pit lane. So a bit of an incident maybe then for Jan Ryler. But he's back into the pit lane then. And of course, time's added on for his pit stop to get the car towed back to the pits, quote unquote. And Harry Spears, there you can see, stays out for another lap. That's Kirsten Abea that's ahead of him. He's going to take the slipstream of that Ferrari as he makes his way now down towards the Retafilio chicane. And you can see there the car getting out of the way down in towards turn one. And Harry Spears here staying out and again just trying to leave it as late as he possibly can to serve his mandatory stop. Yep, so for his mandatory stop he does come in. But we do... As you said, we saw Vons come into a pit for the mandatory, mandatory spot. Remember, Vela does have that 10-second penalty that he did receive from the stewards in P7 right now. Looks like Spears with three minutes left on the clock. Will he come in this lap or will he come in next? It's going to be tight, isn't it? Because uh, a lap around here, we're thinking the 147s, 148s. So it's going to be a, a tight turnaround. But uh, if he's risk-averse he'll pit in now if he loves a risk he'll stay out for yet another lap so we'll have to wait and see how that goes as they now make their way down the Curva del Seraglio and we're uh, just seeing in the chat there there is uh, Emily Marsh who is uh, William Marsh's sister um, my heart is beyond broken we will keep SRP going for the community uh, thank you and uh, well yes as uh, World Pro Racing said in the chat it's the least we can do uh, William Marsh you know taken from us way way too soon and we do send you all our best from world pro racing to yourself emily marsh and your family as well at this tough tough time so harry spears leading the way it's simon speth in second place it's pinchbeck in third jimmy holm in fourth but they've all got to yet make their mandatory stop uh, marla akizi in fifth place carly atkins in sixth and to answer your question kai he's going to come into the pits now he's not willing to take that risk uh, of staying out an extra lap so our race leader is into the pits for his mandatory stop 22.4 from Speth but we're looking at least 40 seconds to uh, Kesey which if he's played this right he's going to rejoin with so much free air ahead of him Simon Speth we're expecting into the pits as well unless he wants to risk another lap no he doesn't he's just running a little bit too close to that pit window clock closing yeah so that pit window clock with one minute 50 left it looks like we will have to still see Holm come into the pits now with McKean down in P9 we also need to see him pit so I'm sure they will be coming in very very soon if not this lap Urquizy where is he gonna come out in uh, in relation to Speth is he gonna jump him it looks like he won't so Urquizy in P4 right now Pinchbeck in P3 Speth in P2 and Spears obviously still in the lead as uh, he's made that look easy hasn't he just pushed as hard as he can rejoins in the lead of this race and now just trying to focus now on getting it to the end of the race there's Jan Nicholas Erbrick then who's trying to battle away with the number 41 car of Carly Atkins so they're trying to battle away for third place at this moment in time as they now make their way through the Curva Grande we wait for those standings on the left hand side to update they normally update as we head through the first sector which is just before the Roger Chicane 
making our way now down towards the breaking zone there. Now you can see Akizi now in second place, Carly Atkins in third, Jan Nicholas Erbrick in fourth with Marek Vons in fifth place, Simon Smith in sixth, Chris Pinchbeck in seventh place with Jimmy Holman in eighth, David Ohak in ninth, or he was at least, he's now sixth. And there is Chris Pinchbeck battling away with Luke Whitehead. The two Mercedes going door to door in towards the Roger chicane, but Pinchbeck just about holds on. Luke Whitehead gets the much better exit onto the grass. Once again, he goes as he now tries to go around the outside of the first Lesmo. There's no way through for him this time around. Now he's got the inside line towards the second Lesmo. Can he try and get a move done here? Sign sealed and delivered. A little bit of contact between the two of them. Luke Whitehead finds the way through then and Pinchbeck falls down to 10th place. Luke Whitehead up to 9th. Yeah, so Luke Whitehead making his way up into ninth position. Unfortunate mistake there. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, unfortunate for Pinchbeck there. Luke Whitehead making his way up into P9, though. He's recovering from his current mistake, which we saw just around here. Ooh, nearly steps out the rear end, as I say so. So commentator's curse nearly coming into play, but not quite. Luke Whitehead, is this going to be a recovery drive? I guess we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. He's currently ninth place. And again, the pit stops just don't seem to be his friend in these races. He's now down to ninth place. And yeah, that was definitely further down than he wanted. He was in fourth before the spin. And he went back down to fifth place. Now he's rejoined in ninth. So something's not quite clicking for Luke Whitehead tonight. And I'll be eager to find out what it is as we make our way now. Once again, down the start, finish straight. Yep. So down the start, finish straight. We watched David Ohaku. We saw have an amazing race in the sprint race p6 currently in the feature race so not a bad drive from him so far but still 20 minutes left the race what can he do in this remaining time david ohak then sixth place with simon speth in seventh there you can see dean riley pop into the picture he's in eighth place at the moment so we're gonna see a little bit of battling for this sixth place then between these three cars david ohak then in the lamborghini the dj racing lamborghini making his way through the first lesmo 23 and a half minutes to go of this race harry spears still in the lead 3.3 seconds ahead of hamada akizi it's carly atkins in third yeah nicholas erbrick in fourth place marek vons in fifth with david ohak in sixth uh, simon speth in seventh place dean riley in eighth luke whitehead in ninth and chris pinchbeck rounds off the top 10 it's jimmy holm in 11th alex leif in 12th nat thomas in 13th place tom McEwing in 14th and silver pyramid rounds off our points scoring positions Hamada Akizi then, second place, 3.3 seconds behind Harry Spears, but he's 11.3 seconds clear of Carly Atkins. Really the definition of full focus ahead. Yep, so Akizi currently in second position right now. Spears, as you said, in the lead right now. So this will really start to get interesting. Three seconds between the two of them, Akizi. Bringing it down ever so slightly, but we see a great battle right here. Marek Vons, uh, no, sorry, not a great battle. Marek Vons just getting overtaken right now by who actually was that? Was that a back marker? I think it was. It was a back marker unlapping himself. It's one of the Ash Tuar cars out there. So uh, that's just uh, him getting a lap on himself, which is which would explain why Marek just decided not to battle there. It's Ashton Cox. Uh, there are the 158 Ashtar racing car. So he has rejoined. He spent a long time in the pit lane there, but he's decided to come back out and try and finish off this race. He's two laps down on the car ahead of him, let alone on what the leaders are doing as well. So, yeah, pretty wise from uh, Marek Vons there not to battle that car. Just let him go. Let him deal with his own race out there. As uh, we've got uh, one of the uh, cars there, the 690 car. That's Reina Rassar having a bit of a moment at Ascari on the exit anyway. There's Harry Spears then still leading the way. 3.2 seconds. So Hamada Akizi is closing in very, very slowly. Harry Spears has got to be careful, got to guard against complacency at this late stage in the race. Yep. So he really does need to keep an eye out. So, But that gap is coming down. Akizi 3.2 was 3.6 not so long ago. So Spires, he's either had a moment or Akizi's just putting down some flying lap times right now 20 minutes left in the race this really could come down to the wire it could at the rate Akiz is doing it though it's bit by bit at the moment 48.5 is his last lap a 48.2 has been his best so he is really consistent at this moment in time heading his way now down towards the Retafilio chicane so 
Well, 3.2 seconds it is right now. Let's see what it's like 20 minutes in the future. Let's see if we get a great, uh, a great battle on there. And uh, I've just been told that we've been we've been raided on the Twitch channel on World Pro Racing by Hanny. So welcome along to World Pro Racing. Thank you for the raid and welcome to all of the uh, followers as well. And uh, if you are enjoying this action, we'd love to have you a part of the World Pro Racing community. You can visit us at worldproracing.com and you can follow us on Twitch. You can also like and subscribe on YouTube as well. Welcome along. I, will, I, I guarantee you, we, 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 you've joined at the right time. 20 minutes to go, 3.4 seconds the gap for the lead. We've got some great prizes on the line, all uh, on courtesy of HyperX. It's been a great race so far. Yeah, this has packed everything into the race. Urquizy, 3.4, so the gap is going up just a little bit once again. Spires, he's really doing a great job out in the lead. He, actually, this will be playing a little bit of mind games with Urquizy. He gains a bit one lap, loses a bit one lap, so he really will be thinking to himself, what can he do to improve and gain time on the driver ahead? And that really can play a toll on someone's driving if that's all they're focusing on. Definitely. There's Harry Spears there making his way in through Parabolico, and he's, he's almost given that message to himself. Three and a half seconds now the gap is, so he's opened it up by another three tenths of a second as he now makes his way down the start, finish straight to start another lap in this race. Lap 23 of this race, we've got just over 19 minutes to go. Harry Spears leads the way. Of course, he won the sprint race, and when it comes to the points here, obviously he finished first in the sprint race, so he's actually going to get a podium penalty points isn't he? He's going to get three points taken off of his total, but I don't think he'll be too concerned about that right now. Yeah, I was working it out earlier. If Spires wins this race, as he also did win the sprint race, he will get the maximum amount of points that anybody can get. And even if someone uh, what, fi finished P4 and won the race, uh, they still wouldn't get as many points as Spires winning the race and winning the second race as well. So Spires in a great position to be bringing home some amazing prizes. Definitely, and all courtesy of HyperX here tonight. And of course, if you are just tuning in, we are of course dedicating this race to the late William Marsh, who uh, sadly passed away on the March 22nd. It would have been his birthday today as well, his 28th birthday. So taken from us far, far too soon, a shining light in the sim racing community. We race on for him. Yeah, Nicholas Erbrick then in fourth place, trying to put the pressure on Carly Atkins as we make our way in towards the second Lesbo. And this, of course, is a battle for the last remaining podium position. And we now make our way through the curve at Del Serralio. Of course, if you're watching along on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitch, we'd love to have you as a member of each of those. And if you're watching along on ESTV, TFM, TVM Sport and Motorsport TV, it's great to have you along as well. Hopefully, you've been enjoying the action. You can find us also on worldproracing.com. If you like the side of this and want to get out onto track, well, there's a bit of everything for everyone at this moment in time. All levels are welcome on both PC and PS4. So if that sounds like your kind of trip, make sure you head over to the website and we'll hopefully see you on the track very, very soon. And we want to say big thank you to HyperX for providing us the prizes for the HyperX Open Series, as well as our other sponsors as well, Gaming Malta, VisitMalta.com, AMD, GT Omega Racing, and Ooh. Thrustmaster. Oh, we got silver pyramids in the wall there. Huge front end damage there for silver pyramids that mercedes does not look in a good way at all yeah pyramids just got rotated there and into the wall went the went the mad black mercedes you could see the hood on the car come bending up and unfortunately goes backwards into the wall again so that'll be some massive damage there for silver pyramids and i won't be surprised if that's suspension damage yeah, that def definitely didn't look great, that damage, did it? It's just straight on into that barrier there. Never, never a good sign. Meanwhile, battle for third place, developing here. Carly Atkins just trying to defend from Jan Nicholas Erbeck right behind as we make our way on towards the first Lesbo once again. Carly Atkins doing his best to just try and hold on for this moment in time. Let's have a replay of what happened here. So this is Silver Pyramids then on the outside. That's McCain behind him. And yep, well, there you go. McCain just gives him a little bit of a, a loop there. And uh, yeah, we'll have to leave that one to the stewards to see 
what results from that one. But not a great day at the office for Silver Pyramids. He did rejoin onto the track. He didn't come back to the pit lane, I don't think. Uh, sorry, no, he's now made it back into the pits as we speak. So there's going to be a lot of damage to that car. Hopefully, we'll be able to see him finish this race because, you know, you start an hour race, you get three quarters of the way through, you really do want to be finishing it. Yeah, especially if you put so much dedication and time going into this race, the least you could do is finish it. And it's always a bonus if you finish in a good position. Yeah, definitely. That's the way to look at it. There's Tom McEwing, meanwhile. 14th place for him so far in the McEwing Motorsport Ferrari, the number 89 silver car out there, making his way through the first Lesmo on then towards the second Lesmo, as I think that's Malsharek who's found a way past him up into 14th place. And it is Malsharek who has found a way past him. The Orange 1 Travel F Racing Team 63 car making his way now underneath the old banking. So Malsharek up into 14th place. His next target will be Nat Thomas, who's about three and a half seconds up the road. Yep, three and a half seconds up the road, as you said. But Malsharek in P14 right now, so he will be taking home two points. But Carly Atkins, under pressure from Jan Nicholas Erbrick, we were saying earlier that there was 20 minutes left for Erbrick to push as hard as possible and gain as much time as possible. And it looks like he's been able to do that. Atkins now under a lot of pressure from behind. Yeah, he really is. And there's more cars joining the battle as well. Marek Vons will be along very, very shortly. But that's Ashton Cox. He's about four laps down on these rivals here. So the best thing for these guys to do is just let Ashton Cox through. He's not the one you need to be looking out for. The one behind him, there you can see, is Marek Vons in the 404 Connection Lost Racing car. That's the one you need to keep your eye on as Ashton Cox fancies his battles here. I mean, he's got the blue flags waving, warning him that Marek Vons is behind. But he wants to get a move on here he wants to get through and see if he can get some fast laps on the board Marek Vons then is now in the slipstream here as we make our way up towards Parabolica one more time with just under 14 minutes of the race to go and the uh, incident between the number 334 and the number 24 so that's the one we saw on the exit of the first Lesmo uh, the number 334 will be getting a drive-through penalty for causing a collision that's McCain there so uh, we'll have to wait and see how he recovers from that one, but it's not great for him at all. There's our race leader of Harry Spears in the Sidemax Motorworks Mercedes number 285. And I've been told again, we've been raided by another uh, streamer on Twitch. Sir Foch, welcome along and welcome to your fans as well. You're watching World Pro Racing. This is the HyperX Open Series here. We're just into the final quarter of the feature race here, this 60 minute race. We've got Harry Spears in the lead and we're dedicating this race to the late William Marsh. It would have been his 28th birthday today at the founder of Sim Racing Paddock. Meanwhile then we've got Jan Nicholas Erbrick still trying to defend here. And he's got Ashton Cox behind him. He's got, Ashton Cox has now got Marek Vons in the 404 Connection Lost Ferrari, flashing his lights then. And there you go, there you can see, he finally does jump out of the way, does Ashton Cox as uh, Jan Nicholas Erbrick still putting that pressure on Carly Atkins. He's got to be looking in his rear view mirror soon because he's got Marek Vons right behind him. But we know Marek Vons can put up a bit of a fight. Yeah, we know that Vons is really capable of a good battle. Jan Nicholas Erbrick, though, as you said, still applying the pressure to Carly Atkins ahead. You can see the orange and blue Mercedes going into Ascari now as we get the perfect onboard with the Lamborghini against all types of squirmish all over the curb. He can, using all the exit that he can as he makes his way down to Parabolica, the famous last corner here at Monza. It's always important to take a bit of a wider entry so that you do not run wide and go all over the AstroTiff on the exit, but you see a bit of snap oversteer from Jan Nicholas Zubrak as he enters the corner, manages to get it stable for the exit though, but that will lose him a bit of time. It will lose him a slight bit of time then, but he'll hopefully make that up, or hopefully for him, I should say, made that up in the toe. But that's just an invitation for Marek Vons behind him as well, as we now make our way down towards the Retafilio chicane. Carly Atkins defending the inside line, then takes the racing line. So one move and then back to the racing line is absolutely fine. Yeah, Nicholas Erbrick in fourth place there, but there you can see Vons in fifth, a number 404 car making his way through the curve of ground. He got a great launch off of the Retafilio chicane, making our way through turn three here riding on board with Marek Vons as he looks to try and find a 
way past Jan Nicholas Erbrick. Erbrick defends the inside line. Marek Vons then does a switch, but decides not to go for the move down the inside. Possibly a wise decision. He wasn't quite close enough to force a move there. But we now make our way towards the first Lesma. You can see Marek Vons just filling those rear view mirrors of Jan Nicholas Erbrick. Yep. So you can, all you can see in the rear mirrors of Erbrick right now is Vons. Erbrick, he was applying pressure to the car, car ahead, but now he has got a lot of pressure on his shoulders from the car behind. He really needs to be careful of the connection lost racing Ferrari behind him as he has a little look into Ascari. Tucked back in, thinks otherwise as they go into the first part and the, the second part. Now the third and final exit of Ascari. This is really important. If Bonds wants to make an overtake into Parabolica, You'll get the slipstream running down there, but will he be able to make anything stick as he goes into it? No, we won't. Just a little bit far back. So Erbrick holds on to the position for now. Just over 10 minutes to go in this race then. We've got Harry Spears in the lead by 5.3 seconds ahead of Hamada Okizi. Carly Atkins we're seeing there has got a train behind him as we make our way down the start finish straight. This is the battle for third place. That fourth car in the queue is about four laps down on these guys, but he still wants to be a bit of part of the action. Carly Atkins has got Jan Nicholas Erbrick to his left hand side as we make our way now down the start finish straight. Atkins has the inside line then Erbrick had to go the long way round in towards the Retafilio chicane. Carly Atkins will park it on the apex of the second part of the Retafilio chicane and keep a hold once again of third place. Carly Atkins knows how to defend a position. Yeah, Carly Atkins, he knows every line to take as we get a beautiful shot of all the drivers in line Passing the camera, Carly Atkins just covers the middle of the track. So no one thinks of going in for any moves. But that's very wide there on the first part from Jan Nicholas Erbrick. Opens the door for Vons. Vons tries to go to the outside the first Lesmos. Is he going to be able to make anything stick here though? He's going to hold his line till the day he dies. He holds it around the outside. It looks like Erbrick leaves him the room around the second Lesmo. Will he be able to secure the overtake? He goes all over the grass. But he's still along still alongside him bonds he's gonna look up the inside into ascari this is gonna be a beautiful battle between the two drivers both leaving each other the right amount of space but surely the top speed of the lamborghini has to make him force it out of it yes he does bonds has to back out yeah and that's a great battle between the two of them both of them leaving the just about right amount of room between each other then and that's a great battle heating up for fourth place. The only problem is it's taken them away from the battle for third place. Luke Whitehead there we're seeing is just trying to put the pressure on Riley ahead of him. He's got David Ohak right behind as well. Yeah, Nicholas Erbrick, we're rejoining this battle for what now is fourth place as uh, Atkins is about a second up the road. He's still within that sort of slipstream range. But Marek Vons here is making life pretty difficult for the German in the DJ Racing Lamborghini. Making our way now down the start finish straight. Where will the Ferrari of Marek Vons go here? You can see Erbrick making life difficult for the Ferrari behind as we make our way in towards the Retafilio chicane. As that, you can see there's two back markers battling away as well. As there's a little bit of a tap from Marek Vons onto the back of Jan Nicholas Erbrick. No, no harm, no foul right there. We should make our way through Curva Grande. Just got to be careful at this moment in time. Yes, they're battling for this last podium place, but they've been really, really good racing so far. They don't want to throw it away now. Yep, so seven minutes left of the race. You can see just how close Bonds is getting to the back of, I think that's Atkins. No, not Atkins, sorry. How close Bonds is getting to the back of Erbrick. Well, Lamborghini's still all, all, all over the back of Atkins ahead of him. But you can see Vaughn squirming for that position. He wants that fourth position back. Vaughn, he looked for the overtake earlier on Triscari. Will he think about it again? Doesn't look like he's got a good enough run. But Erbrick, he's going to look to the in outside of Atkins. Atkins, he's going to cover off the inside. They're going to go side by side into Ascari. That opens up the door for Vons. Vons has to back out. They're all going to file out of Ascari in position. 
Absolutely. There's Mario Vons, who's right on the rear wing of Jan Niklas Erbrick as they make their way up towards the Parabolica once again with six and a half minutes left on the clock. You can see there Erbrick has just got enough grunt in the engine there to hold back. Marek Vons, Vons looking for a move down the inside. Not quite close enough. They've both brought themselves back into action with that battle for third place. That's Carly Atkins right ahead of them as they make their way now down the start finish straight once again. The two cars behind are back markers. They're not for position. They're just having their own battle in the background. Jan Nicholas Erbrick is providing the slipstream for Marek Vons then. Is there another move on the cards here? You see Erbrick then moving back towards the racing line and puts Vons off a move then. And now in towards the Retifilia chicane. Vons trying to make a move now. He has to go the long way around in towards the second part of the Retifilia chicane. But he can't quite get the power down. And Erbrick just about has the nose ahead. He'll take the inside line going through the Curva Grande and keep a hold of his position. This is a great battle for third place. The stewards have just informed us that the number uh, 13 car, which is David Ohak, will get a penalty. More on that in a bit because there goes Marek Vons trying to go up the inside. And they make contact going through the second part and there's contact between the back markers behind. Marek Vons gets the move done then. Luke Whitehead also up to sixth place. He's got a move done at last on Dean Riley and now has to defend for it as well now in towards the first Lesmo. As you can see there, Dean Riley wants that position back. He's going to look up the inside towards the second Lesmo or at least put Luke Whitehead under that bit of pressure, but Whitehead gets the move done. He moves now up into sixth place. Yes, the number 13 car of David Ohak will take a 10-second penalty for causing an avoidable incident on the number treble eight car. So that's on Simon Speth. So that'll be added. Well, he won't be making any stops now, so that'll be added to the end of his race time. So that's going to drop him further down the order, possibly at the back end of the point. But we've got four minutes, 40 seconds of this race, and I could not tell you who could grab that third place spot. It is going to be so close between these drivers all the way down to the last second of the race. Four minutes, 30 remaining. Vons and Erbrick still at this beautiful battle for the fourth position right now. But if you think about it, they could work together and they could catch on to Atkins for something greater. But it looks like Erbrick has other ideas. He's going to look up the inside into the first Retifilio chicane. Will he be able to hold the line? We saw contact between them earlier. Will they be able to keep it clean this time round, though? Erbrick, he gets squeezed out wide, has to back out of it. And that's just more time that's being lost to Atkins ahead. Uh, but Atkins, he's less than a second ahead of them. So they're still in contention for P3. Erbrick looking the long way around in towards Curva Grande. He wants the inside line for the Roger Chicane. He's going to get it, you know. Down the inside, he will go in his Lamborghini. Contact made between the two of them there. Marek Vons has to miss the chicane. He keeps a hold of his position then. Really didn't have anywhere else to go other than across the bollards and the sleeping policemen then. Erbrick then will have to try and find his way past yet again. Uh, Luke Whitehead still managing to hold on to sixth place in this race as we are approaching three minutes left of this race. Marek Vons holding on to fourth place. There's your race leader in Harry Spears. And normally, Kai, when you don't see a lot of the race leader, that's normally a good sign. Well, I mean, isn't it always a good sign when you don't see much of the race leader? Obviously, it's not uh, the most thrilling race for them, but I'm sure they will be happy with the current five and a half second lead that he has. Harry Spears absolutely dominating this uh, round one here at Monza. He absolutely shattered the race in the sprint race and he's looking to do the same in the feature. Yeah, Hamada Akizi in second place. Also a quiet race for him since the pit window. He's just able to hold on. He's losing ground on Spears, but he's opened up a huge gap on Carly Atkins. It's more than 22 seconds between himself and third place there. So he's settled in. He's settled into his rhythm and able to just keep going and keep on pushing on. Uh, Carly Atkins then, still that battle for third place rages on and it'll rage on for pretty much the rest of this race. We'll have to wait and see how that battle unfolds. David Ohak, meanwhile, has got the penalty. He's got Speth right behind him, making our way out in towards the Retifilio chicane and Speth has got the inside line. He takes the apex for turn two and he's got the move done. David Ohak down to ninth, Simon Speth up to eighth. Yep, Simon Speth up to eighth position now great drive from him so david ohak is lost out on that position but that's a big dive bomb there from bond he's massively overshot the chicane he does slow down to let the drivers go 
but Atkins nearly gets collected on the rejoin from Vons. Atkins manages to survive, though. He actually loses a little bit of time from that. Yeah, Code Brown moment there from Marek Vons, but he was able to keep it away from everybody else. And as you said, stayed on the right-hand side of the track, let Carly Atkins back through. It allowed Jan Nicholas Erbrick to get fourth place. So all that hard work he did, getting past Erbrick, he's got to do it all over again with just over 60 seconds to go. He's leaving his braking really late here as I believe we've just started the final lap of this race then. So Harry Spears has crossed the line to start the final lap of this race. He's got a 5.4 second buffer from Hamada Akizi in second place. We are watching on for this battle for third place between Carly Atkins, Jan Nicholas Erbrick, and Marek Vons making our way through Parabolica for the penultimate time on towards the start finish straight. And we'll see here who can come out on top. There is Harry Spears then in the Side Max Motorworks Mercedes in the number 285 red Mercedes making his way in towards the Roger Chicane for the final time. It's been a really, really good race from him. Uh, and uh, race control confirming that it was uh, an instruction for Vons to give back the position. So that's why he moved to the right-hand side. And that's why he had to give the position back to Jan Nicholas Erbrick because he did cut the Roger Chicane. Harry Spears then making his way through just around halfway through the lap. Meanwhile then, Jan Nicholas Erbrick in fourth place then with Marek Vons in fifth as we now make our way now down towards the Roger Chicane for the final time. As there you can see, Vons looking up the inside, going in towards the Roger Chicane. Jan Nicholas Erbrick holds on then for that position for fourth place. Marek Vons wants that fourth place back. He's had it about twice, three times in this race as we make our way now through in towards the first Lesmo, now towards the second. But there is Harry Spears making his way now in towards the final corner, Parabolica. He won the sprint race and now he'll make his way towards the line to grab the feature race victory as well. The lights flash on. He makes his way to the checkered flag. He makes it two wins out of two. To Harry Spears wins in Italy for the second time today. Hamada Akizi finishes in second place, five and a half seconds down. But we rejoin that battle for third Ooh. place, and they have come together. Akizi and Vons all the way around on the exit of Ascari. Luke Whitehead takes advantage. So too does Dean Riley. And out of nowhere, they're now up into fourth and fifth place. Carly Atkins sails off into the distance now. He knows this third place is all but secured. He just needs to make his way through Parabolica for the final time. Onwards towards the start finish line. Carly Atkins, coolest man in the shed, makes his way towards the line to grab third place in this race. He had an uh, excellent drive to hold off the two charges behind. Luke Whitehead finishes in fourth place, picking up the pieces, as does Dean Riley, who finishes in fifth place. Jan Nicholas Erbrick in sixth place, with Simon Speth in seventh, David Ohak in eighth, but he will get that 10 second penalty applied to his time. Marek Vons in ninth, and Chris Pinchbeck in 10th place. Jimmy Holm finishes in 11th place. Alex Leif in 12th. Nat Thomas currently 13th with uh, Malsharek in 14th and Dean Vella in 15th. All three of those yet to take the chequered flag, but they're quite a way and distance away from each other. So we're expecting them to finish that one. Uh, just to correct myself, the, uh, the re-give position order by race control was for an earlier incident, not the one at the uh, Roger Chicane that we saw the second time around. But Harry Spears once again puts on a dominant display here at Monza. Two wins out of two. That's how you do it. What a drive. What a performance from him tonight. Outstanding performance from Harry Spears. But let's talk about Ascari on that final lap between uh, between Jan Nicholas Erbrick and, uh, and Vons. Some people say go big up or go home. I think that was really taken to the extreme in that case. It was indeed. And the two of them, well, for that, they don't get fourth place. They don't get fifth place either. They finish further down the order. Just saw that out of the uh, figurative corner of our eyes there of that incident. I'm sure the stewards will have a look at that one as well. Then Harry Spears, two wins out of two tonight. He has been sensational. Hamada Akizi finishing in second place. Carly Atkins, I mean, fair play to him as well. He made sure he was not overtaken and he held on for third place for, I'm sure, what felt for him an eternity. Yeah, Atkins drove an amazing defensive race to hold on to his line, especially with the two drivers scrapped behind him. You'd think that he'd buckle under the pressure, but no, he kept it as cool as he could 
and he just drove like no one was even near him. Absolutely, and all, and that, all that carnage happening behind him. That's where you want it to happen as well. And as we said, I'm sure we're going to have that incident involving the two drivers on the exit of Ascari investigated by the stewards. We'll let you know if there's a result of that during this stream. But, uh, I mean, yeah, we've had some two good races. We now leave it to the team behind the scenes to work out who finishes top three when the points are added together and the podium penalty points are taken away. We'll see who comes out on top in this first round of the HyperX Open Series. Just to give a bit of clarification, this isn't a championship. It's a sort of race that's decided on the day who the winner is. And it's running now for the next eight months. And you can find the next one on May the 7th. That'll be the next time this event runs. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's going to be at Silverstone. So that should be a fantastic one to watch. Yeah, Silverstone, it's all, it's always it's always a good track to race at. I think a lot of people uh, like Silverstone. It's a nostalgic track, and I think that it always provides good action. I mean, if Monza provided us anything, it was also great action. I mean, there was... <laughs> action up and down the field we were seeing battles for third place we were seeing battles for 20th place at some points in these races all these drivers they have a massive respect for each other out there and it really showed yeah i think uh, especially with that race taken into account it isn't over until it's actually over Definitely. And uh, the two drivers there, Jan Nicholas Erbrick and Marek Vons, uh, I'm sure there'll be a discussion between the two of them about the final part of Ascari, but we'll leave that to them and to the stewards as well. Uh, as we've been confirmed by our team behind the scenes, they're working on the points. So this gives us a bit of time, Kai, to review the sprint race and the feature race. I mean, two great races in their own right. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that Harry Piers, he was kind of untouchable in... The first and the second race got an amazing start in both of them and then just kind of drove off from there. Amada Rikizi as well didn't have the greatest sprint race in the world, didn't get a great start either, fell down to sixth place in that sprint race. But, you know, the feature race told us that he's more than got the pace out there, finishing in second place. And I think he was meant to finish in second place all that time. I think it's fair to say that the feature race really shows uh, the driver's ability, especially because of the double race distance of the sprint races, an hour long race. So you got to keep focused throughout. And I think that really separates the good drivers from the decent drivers. Luke Whitehead, though, seemed to struggle in these races, not mainly maybe because of pace, but it seems that when he had his pit stop, he rejoined a lot further down than other drivers were rejoining. I mean, that couldn't have helped him with his performances today. No, I, I really don't think that did help uh, Luke in any in any shape or form, but he really did get lucky at the end with the collision between Erbricht and Vons, and uh, he did manage to snatch P4 in the in the sprint race, so that's good for him. That's uh, a future race, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, the top three that we work out by the points will be given prizes as provided to us by our sponsor, HyperX, hence the HyperX Open Series. So it's all on the line here. These drivers want those prizes. They're great prizes to have as well. Uh, so uh, we'll have to wait and see who gets those. And hopefully we'll have a, a quick chat to those top three towards the end of the stream but just want to give a, a big thank you to uh, all of our sponsors here tonight of course HyperX sponsoring the series as well as World Pro Racing along with Gaming Malta, VisitMalta.com, AMD, GT Omega Racing and Thrustmaster and wherever you're watching us whether it be on Facebook, on Twitch, on YouTube, on ESTV, Motorsport TV and TVM Sport it's been a pleasure bringing this race to you and of course a great event to dedicate to William Marsh, the founder of uh, Sim Racing Paddock. Of course, uh, he leaves a legacy behind in all of uh, Sim Racing. Would have been his 28th birthday today, taken from us way, way too soon. I mean, when you combine Monza with these cars, GT3 cars, you were always going to get great action out there. I think we got exactly what we expected. Some great action, great racing, bit of drama as well. But on the whole, a great day of racing. Yeah, GG3 cars, they're, all, they're always some of the best cars to race because you can always have a bit of rubbing between them without any major damage. So I think that's a benefit uh, in them compared to single seaters. And uh, yeah, it's always close racing. It's like Formula E. 
It, it really is. It really is. And of course, don't forget as well, World Pro Racing. Uh, and the next time we go live will be on Wednesday. That'll be for the USF 2000 series as brought to you by uh, Alex Goldschmidt and Chris Buxton here on World Pro Racing. Next week, next Friday, we've got German Fest. So uh, you expect to see some German cars around some great German tracks as well as on Saturday, the 10th of April, we've got the 226 kilometer of Nürburgring special. So really a great week of racing lined up for you. So head over to World Pro Racing com if that sounds like your kind of thing you can head over there now so we've got the points then from those races and it is as follows well we've got third place in the standings was uh was carly carly atkins so he got 30 points in the end second place hamada akizi with 35 points and that means our winner today, well, winning both races, it was always going to happen, wasn't it? Harry Spears is our winner of the first round of the HyperX Open Series. And uh, we're having a look through here, seeing if we've got, who can we have a chat to? I think we've got second place in the Open Series so far. We've got Hamada Akizi. Hamada, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Loud and clear. Oh. Oh, fantastic. Hamada, well, second place in that Open Series. You've got some prizes coming your way. How do you feel? Um... Um, I feel very happy actually. It was uh, great fun these two races and uh, um, especially the sprint race was was hella fun. It was like um, it was like too much pressure from the Mercedes behind because once you you see that Mercedes in in the rear uh, mirror, it's like you're frightened because every straight line it's gonna catch you 100 percent. Well, talk to us more about that sprint race, because it, it, it didn't seem like you got a great start down there. You fell down to sixth place, and it, it seemed like you had to fight your way back through to get those positions back. Yeah, exactly, because uh, when I go to the straight line and there's a Mercedes behind me, it's going to catch me, and, and that forces me to defend. And while I'm defending, the others are catching up. So, uh, like, when I was in um, the beginning of Sector 2, there was, like, three Mercedes in the same corner, as you can remember. <laughs> And that was so frightening. I ended up uh, going off track for a bit. Then I got overtaken by a Lambo and uh, I got myself like sixth place. I didn't understand how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly kept your cool in that scenario. And it was a much more relaxed feature race for you. I mean, second place for you. You made that look easy. Um, I mean, it was not that easy because the, like the Mercedes, it's untouchable. You cannot like catch it. And uh, once you get it behind you, it's the same scenario. You're always frightened and have to defend. But like, um, I think Luke um, had uh, such an unfortunate race. Uh, he's so unlucky, especially in Monza, as he always says. I think if he didn't have uh, any trouble, he, he could be at the top with us today. Well, yes, absolutely. And uh, looking forward to your next excursion out here. I mean, we've got Silverstone next if you're there for that one. How do you rate your chances of doing well there? Well, I'm pretty excited for Silverstone. Uh, I mean, I, I really, really love that track, and um, I will be driving the Ferrari there as well. Well, fantastic, fantastic to hear. Don't give away too many secrets, though, Hamada. I don't want to give away the game too early. But uh, the floor is yours for any shout-outs, any sponsors you'd like to mention. Yeah, just um, my team. I just love my team, H3 Racing, and I love you guys for providing these races. It's a... Uh, uh, I, we really appreciate you, uh, WPR. You, you guys um, do such an amazing job. Well, thank you very much, Hamada. Go enjoy your prizes. Go and enjoy your night there. Congratulations on your second place here in the HyperX Open thank Series you. Round 1 at Monza. Thank uh, you so much. Kai, Kai, I believe you've got Carly Atkins down there. Yeah, I've got the P3 finisher of Carly Atkins over here with me. So, uh, Carly, let's first talk about your feature race, because... That was an outstanding drive, uh, amazing defensive drive. Just talk us through the race. Uh, yeah, it was a wonderful race. I mean, I struggled for a lot of pace, to be honest. I was uh, having troubles with the brakes, and it was just, yeah, it was really bad. Uh, sh I should have gone higher on the brakes, but I messed up on that one. And near the end, I was just struggling for pace, but managed to hold on in the end. Yeah, an amazing drive in the feature race, but also you you didn't have the best of sprint races, so talk us through that. Yeah, the first sprint race, uh, I had a terrible start. I was trying to save fuel um, before I went off and I was stuck in second. I didn't go down to first. That was my fault. Lost quite a few positions, got one back and just struggled with pit stops, really. 
but um, managed to get fifth in the end with my pace in the first one. Just struggled for that in the second one, but still managed to get third in the second one. If you are here for the next round of the HyperX series, you finished third overall in round one at Monza. You think you're going to be able to get that P1 over in Silverstone? Yeah, Silverstone is one of my favourite tracks. I look forward to that track, looking forward to being at the front with everyone else. And uh, just to finish it off, anyone you would like to mention, shout out, any sponsors? Yeah, I'd like to say a massive thanks to PC Boys Esports for the amazing subs and the support they've been giving me. Uh, I'd like to say a massive thanks to my dad for everything he's done for me, getting my sim, of course, believing in me. I, um, Tim and Danny for um, sponsoring me. And I'd like to say also a massive thanks to Fanatec CSL Elite for not failing me. And yeah, that's it. Well, Carly, thank you so much for joining us and enjoy your prizes and amazing racing today. I'd like to also say thank you to World Pro Racing for hosting such an amazing event. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. And so uh, that leaves me to introduce to you our winner for the HyperX Open Series Round 1. It's Harry Spears. Harry, are you with us? Uh, yep, yeah, I'm here. I'll go. Harry, that was a good performance out there. Uh, two race wins. Again, made it look easy. Talk us through those races. Yeah, the first one was quite tough. Cause obviously, I uh, overshot turn one and uh, <clears throat> obviously had to cut across the uh, the inside. And I didn't want to obviously just completely cut across it and uh, give myself an advantage. I sort of uh, slowed down and uh, I'm crazy I ended up getting past, which was, uh, yeah, perfect. I think, uh, yeah, I couldn't keep my eyes off of the, uh, the relative in that one. Just constantly watching that gap to uh, Okizzy, making sure that I, uh, yeah, maintained it. And then uh, your feature race as well. I mean, you finished the day, you know, five and a half seconds in the lead, got yourself that second win. Um, what's the tips then? Because, you know, at some point you have to guard against complacency when the gap's increasing. Yeah, you just have to sort of... Uh... Yeah, watch that gap. <laughs> yeah, like you say, I did end up getting a little bit complacent at the end. But I think I was sort of uh, rested ashore because he was he absolutely had the, the pace advantage over me. I think he had the best lap over me by about three tenths of a second. So he was really on pace alone, he would have won. But I think it was more just making sure that he uh, struggled a little bit with consistency, it felt like. So it was just a case of yeah, making sure I didn't suffer the same fate and knowing if I make a mistake then it's somewhat likely that he's going to make a mistake in return. So we were sort of just trading mistakes for each other, and that gap sort of uh, yeah, just built up and up and up as the race went on. And uh, obviously finishing off with two wins here at Monza, if you are to compete at the second round of the HyperX Open Series at Silverstone, how do you think you're going to get on there? Uh, it's a shame I'm not going to be there, actually. Uh, oh. I was just planning to do this first round and then maybe a few of the, uh, the later ones. But yeah, Silverstone, I wouldn't do very well there. It's one of my worst tracks by far. <laughs> I just can't get the grips of it. <laughs> that might be why you're not making it next time, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Harry, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, any shout-outs and sponsors you want to mention? Uh, yeah, I suppose my shout-out would probably be to uh, SideMac Motorworks, my team, who I've been uh, represented tonight. They do a good job to uh, keep me motivated. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to share the result with them. They'll be happy to hear it, Harry. Well, go and enjoy your prizes. Congratulations on your win today at the HyperX Open Series, and hopefully we'll see you again out on track very, very soon. Yeah, perfect. See you, guys. Well, that's uh, that's our driver interviews done. We've had a word with Race Control. They've told us that the incident with Tweed, the two drivers we saw at the end at Ascari, uh, it's going to be a 30-second penalty for the number 404. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that's going to be Marek Vons who gets that penalty. And the stewards have made it clear that it would have been a drive-through penalty however because it's awarded so late in the race that it will be now a 30 second penalty so that and dropping down the order very very slightly but Kai that rounds off two great races we've had three drivers who are thrilled with their new prizes that they're getting on their way and we've had some great action all throughout yeah it's been amazing to commentate on had lots of fun uh, doing so 
and it was uh, some great battling throughout. Congratulations to all three of the drivers that got their prizes, and I hope they do enjoy them. Absolutely. And uh, whether you've been watching on Facebook, on uh, Twitch, on YouTube, ESTV, Motorsport TV and TV Sport, it's been a pleasure to bring you these races. We'd like to say a massive shout out to our title sponsor, the HyperX Open Series. A big thank you to everyone at HyperX for providing us the prizes for these drivers, as well as our other sponsors, Gaming Malta, VisitMalta.com, AMD, HyperX, GT Omega Racing and Thrustmaster. It's been a pleasure to bring you these races. Myself, Kieran McGinley and Kai Bacini have enjoyed this action we hope you have too and of course we dedicated this race to william marsh who we sadly lost on march 22nd at the age of 27 he would have been 28 today so hopefully this race was good enough to be dedicated to him we'll close out now for our broadcast with that song that was made for him until next time thank you very much for watching and good night
time runs out if a moment is all we are or quicker quicker who cares if one more light goes